it's not like like Walter said that you know. But then Paul was saying, and then they had a big meet. Relationship through him, so you may stop. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Desmond with another video again. And today we're supposed to have open dialogue tonight. This is going to be the night where we're going to have anyone who wants to talk about the Lord, talk about the Bible, wherever they want to talk about, they can. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and just get into the scriptures and talk about it. Uh, if you guys got a testimony, anything you guys want to pray for, anything, this is what this uh, uh, tonight's all about. And we're going to try to do this at least um uh, at the end of every uh, month, uh, we're going to do that Wednesday and Saturday. Just open up the lines for people. Just go ahead and just and speak of the devil. <laughs> hey there, Walter. How you doing? How you doing, bum buddy? I'm doing all right. My doing brother right. in Christ. How you doing, sir? Not, man, I, I'm doing pretty good. I'm surprised you're here after doing four hours. Oh, man. I tell you, it was like three hours and 52 minutes. or, And then we went on a little bit more than that, so... It was good. It was good. No, hey, I appreciate you coming on. I, I, I mean, I know if you want to go go to sleep, you can. You know, I don't really do these that long anyway. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. So no, uh, I, I just I just love supporting you, buddy. So you know. I, I appreciate you. And always, speak- it always makes it for a better show when you're kind of like batting the ball back and forth and just kind of like throwing these ideas, especially with a guy like me. I'm so. I'm so controversial, right? So, like, <laughs> no, uh, you, know, I, you know, I appreciate having you on all the time. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, old brother of mine, uh, Phil, yeah, he's uh, he's actually a, a, a missionary. He's over there. I'm not sure if he's in Pakistan now, but he was over in Pakistan giving the gospel to a bunch of people over there. So it's been really good to see him do his thing over there, giving them the gospel, freeing people from uh, the brickyards. Uh, he has really good testimony. So one of these days, I'm going to get him on here and share his testimony. Oh, in Pakistan, huh? Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's yeah. in the midst of it, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> He's he's always doing something. He's a, he's a good guy to know. Uh, he was actually uh, with the group a long time ago, back in, I think, 2014. We used to do home Bible studies and stuff. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, he's been he's been doing his thing. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, over here in California, it's kind of like another world also. Uh, you know, you're kind of like in the midst of it also. <laughs> you ain't lying about that. That's what everyone says about California. Yeah. California, boy. I tell you, it's like John MacArthur says, you can, it's the only place where you could dress up a guy in uh, like a robe, like a long robe with long hair and give him a staff and you'll have an immediate following. It's uh, <laughs> like Moses, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I see. Well, you know, after watching Ray Comfort and seeing the characters he deal with all the time, and and some of these other guys that witness out there, oh yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah, Ray yeah, Comfort. it's it's all kinds of all kinds of things, you know. When I was younger, I used to go out there on the streets and stuff like that. Boy, you run into all kinds of stuff. I mean, they would grab tracks out of your hand i remember this one girl coming by grabs a track out of my hand and she just takes it and stuffs it in her mouth and just eats it <laughs> like you know this was on hollywood boulevard you know right and then, and then all of a sudden I, I go ahead and hand another track out i mean hand, handing out these tracks and i hand out another one and guess what i hand it to the same girl she does it again <laughs> <She's coming back. laughs> wow <laughs> I says, oh my goodness. Okay. Like, what was wrong with them? Like, yes. <laughs> if they like to eat paper, I guess. And then I did make a comment. I, you know, when the Lord says, men shall not live by bread alone, you know, <laughs> right. Right. He, didn't, he didn't mean it literally like that. So, anyway. Man, I, I, 
you uh you do you do open air witnessing up there do you uh, um I really, I really don't. You know, I'm just kind of like an older guy, older fart. I, what I do is I just go to the local uh, uh, Starbucks, get to know a lot of people. I mean, I meet a lot of people. You, you go to a Starbucks down in, you know, where I'm at, you know, you got, uh, what is it, you know, homeless people that come in. Um, you know, you have uh, Muslims that come in. You've got every atheists, all that stuff. Man, I, there's all kinds of, you know, doors that open when you just hang out at a Starbucks and you just open up conversations and stuff like that and have all kinds of opportunities to share Christ over at a Starbucks. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man, I just uh, I just had a recent experience with Jehovah Witness that uh, I put I put a post on that account probably like last week. Uh, Jehovah Witness that cussed me out literally, and uh, and so I asked him. I said, "Is this what your elders would allow you to do?" And he actually um, he said, "Well, that doesn't apply to uh, you know people like you. You know, I can cuss you all I want." I said, "Really?" I said, "I, I really don't think your elders would allow that." You know, <laughs> so um, yeah. Accor according to other Jehovah Witnesses, they said, "Well, he's on a state, and this isn't that," but. It just goes to show, though, because we were talking about uh, Mike the Archangel, whether he's Jesus or not. And the fact that he got so upset and started cussing me out, I said, well, I'm not sure if you're really representing Jesus at, at, at all, even Mark the Archangel for that matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> you know? right. Yeah, I looked, I used to go out, you know, on a Saturday morning and I say, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out, talk to some people on an early, early Saturday morning. I used to go over to the bus stops and I used to uh, just hang, you know, go out to the bus stops wherever I can see a Jehovah's Witness. I'd pull the car up by myself and just start talking to him, witnessing to him and stuff like that. But, um, uh, you know, as you get older, you know, you just kind of like, you know, I share my faith all the time, of course. But, uh, um, and yesterday with a customer, you know, oh, my goodness, it was a blessing. This uh, elderly lady and my son and I were going over there to pick up a check because we just did some work with, um, uh, you know, um, for the lady on her trees. And so we we're picking up a check and, you know, talking to her about the work. And, you know, she, she just. I find out that she's a Christian and man, we just sat down there together. I gave her a big hug and we started talking about the Lord. My son, he's standing up and he's looking at this interaction between this lady and me. And yeah. she just brought tears to my eyes. The fact that my son was there, you know, and I, I want to always encourage my son to, you know, he says he believes, but you know, he's 30 some odd years old and you'd like to go ahead and really, you know, see your son grab those reins, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's one of those things. But um, but you could tell that he saw something real there, you know. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. So what did you want to talk about? Is CC joining us or somebody else? Uh, the, the other guys might come in a little bit later right now. I see quite a few people just watching, so who knows who might just join in. Uh, but, yeah, the, tonight is really just open discussion, whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, otherwise, like I said, I was just going to go ahead and ramble. <laughs> you know, I, I can definitely talk a lot. I don't mind doing that. But, you know, I like, I like to share the floor with everybody else and just try to, you know, hear different perspectives and go through Scripture and hear what they got to say. Um, but, yeah, other than that, no, uh, I just came back from Bible study literally like, 30, 40 minutes ago, you know, from my church. And so I just hopped back on. Uh, we're going through the uh, book of Romans, Romans chapter two right now. And um, that's actually kind of what I want to talk about right now, um, because, you know, we're talking about judging the, the first part of uh, Romans chapter two. And uh, it was like uh, uh, correlating that with uh, Matthew chapter seven, because a lot of people, when they, they see, hear the word judge or anything like that, they think it's negative, but they forget. If I tell you, if I say, well, Walter's a good person, that's a judgment, too. It's just a positive judgment. We just don't like negative judgments. And so the thing that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 7 was hypocritical judgment. That's what Paul was expounding on, is that, you know, when we uh, judge somebody, we're not, supposed, we're not supposed to judge them hypocritically. In other words, if I'm, if I'm accusing you of lying, I'm not supposed to be a liar myself, you know, that sort of thing. You know, but when it comes to sin, we can definitely call out sin as long as we're being transparent. You know what? 
Paul, he admitted he was the chief of sinners. Yeah, he was calling out sin. You know, the reason why is because he's only quoting what God said. He wasn't saying was something that Paul said. He wasn't putting himself above anyone else. I think he put himself below everybody else, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the most important distinction when we uh when we talk about God and we're talking to other people about the Lord is that when we talk to them about sin in general, that's not a judgment by us at all. It's talk, we're just giving them what the word of God says. So I was encouraging like our people at church and the same here, you know, uh, don't be afraid to you know say what God says. If God says this is wrong, you say it's wrong. You know, don't be afraid to say that. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that there's um, a righteous judgment and there's, you know, uh, an evil judgment. And so, um, you know, we want to go ahead and judge accurately. And, you know, but first of all, we, you know, I think what gives us real, the real power to go ahead and judge others is that we've also come to that place in our lives where we've looked at our own lives. Yeah. And we've actually we've been judged by God and we realize that we've been judged by God. And we, we are always looking at our lives. I mean, if you're a truly regenerative, regenerated individual, somebody that's saved, that's born again, that believes in Christ, we're always looking at ourselves introspectively, right? We always want to know where the Lord would have us change in our lives, the decisions that we make, and so on and so forth. And so we oftentimes are our greatest judge. In fact, sometimes I think I think that it could even fall into sin because yeah. we've, we've not accepted the grace of God, and we still continue to just, you know, judge ourselves so harshly that, that in and of itself turns into sin also, you know what I mean? And so, um, and then you start to become like the, 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 what is it? The blind and bleeding Pharisees. Yeah. Where they started going ahead and doing everything. And then before you know it, you're back into this legalistic type of thing where you're evaluating yourself and look at, I got to kill this sin. I got to kill this. I got to, you know, rather than just saying, Hey man, you know, I just can't do it. Yeah. Lord, you know, I just rest all of my sin at the foot of the cross. Amen. You know, uh, and, and just depend on what you've done for me. You know, you know my framework. You know, you know who I am. You know the deep uh, crevices of my heart and the sin that I I don't speak about. You know my sin within the closets of my home. You know. Uh, what I hide from everybody else and the mask that I, I portray to other individuals. You know me. Yeah. Lord, forgive me. You know, And when we come across like that and you're talking to other individuals, it, it really, you know, when I share the gospel message since we were on that subject matter, it's so easy to, to get an ear from your the person that you want to share Christ with when you share your weaknesses and your failures. Amen. Right. It, you know, they, you know, it's strange, but people want to hear your failures. You know, right. <laughs> they, don't want to hear, they don't want to hear about how good you are, but you know, when you can say to him, you know what, this is my problem. I've got a problem with anger or I struggled with pornography, or I struggled with lust, or alcohol, or drugs, or whatever the situation is, man, that's an end to sharing the gospel. That's an end for them to open their ears to hear what you have to say because you're right there with them. Right. Right? And I tell you, uh, you know, when you're an open book, you know, I tell you, that's that's those have been the greatest times when I've gone ahead and shared the Bible because they says, wow, you have a you have a problem, too. I mean, it's not like I'm a Christian. I'm saying, you know what? 
you know, you got to get your act together. You need to repent. You need to do this. You need to do that. I mean, yes, we're com we command the world to repent. We command the world to believe. We command the world to embrace the gospel. We do these things. But first of all, when we approach people, you know, we want to approach them where they're at. The way that you share the gospel message maybe with a little old lady, you know, is a lot different than you would go ahead and share the gospel message with a guy that's really cocky as opposed yeah. to an older man or a younger lady and so on and so forth. You know, and so, you know, the Lord says, be all things to all men in order that you may be able to win some. And we've got to meet them at their level, right? Yeah. And that was the main issue in uh, Romans 2 with the uh, when Paul was addressing the, uh, the Jews, uh, those who knew the law, those who were um, called themselves teachers of the law. Um, and like Paul said, you know, when you judge, when you uh, teach people, don't you not teach yourselves? You know, when you tell people not to steal, do you steal? And the, like you met, like like they were mentioning, um, they did the opposite of that, though. They they didn't meet people where they are. Instead, they thought they were higher than everyone else. And that's something. And again, this is something that can be applied to the church because the Jews, they knew the law. We know the gospel now. We know the truth of God now. So we can apply this to ourselves. And since we know the truth of God, we have an obligation to teach people. But at the same time, not in a way where we're like, we think, okay, now we're saved. We're better than you. No, we're not. As a matter of fact, we're no better than everyone else. The only reason why we're saved is because of what Christ did on the cross for us. Keeping that, keeping that in mind keeps us humble, keeps us in humility when we're talking to other people. And I think uh, when it comes to a lot of you know Christian churches, uh, the way Christianity is portrayed today, that message is a lot is usually missed by a lot of people. Um, a lot of people they look at Christianity as you know hypocrites. They look at us like you know scam artists, this is and that. Uh, for one, we don't call our own like we should. Um, and then, you know, when we look at the world, you know, how can we judge them? We, we can't even judge our own selves. I think uh, what uh, Paul mentioned that in First Corinthians chapter six, he said, uh, uh, you know, can't, can't either, can't anyone in your church, you know, you know, judge between their brothers? You know, here they are bringing uh, Christians up, you know, uh, like, you know, filing lawsuits against one another. Yeah. Christians shouldn't be doing that. Christians should not be doing that. And even today, we still see that. And, um, you know, we can't bring that before the church and just, you know, have someone, uh, the, the least of us, actually judge us and see who's right or wrong and just abide by their judgment. And it just it brings a whole lot of condemnation towards us when we don't actually take care of things at home first. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you know, that I think it was that Matthew passage that you were referring to remove the the, you know, log out of your own eye, you know. In order that you may be able to re you see the splinter in your brother's eye, you know, basically what he's saying is that it's that concept where you just evaluate yourself. You know, you've laid yourself out. You've laid your sin at the base of that cross. You've laid at the foot of Christ. And um, because the only thing that qualifies a man for salvation is his sin. That's what qualifies us for salvation is our sin. Right. And um and uh, the, you know, when we when we do that, then, and we know that we that the Lord has not judged us, and we've escaped judgment. Then how much more easy is it for us not to judge others, right? I mean, uh, even uh, in that story where the uh, publican and the the uh, you know, uh, the harlot, you know, oh. and he and he asked the <clears throat> and the uh, the woman was entered into this room. And of course, the all the the gentlemen were there. And and of course, she here she is washing Jesus's feet with her tears and her hair. Yeah. And then the the publican just looked at him and said, uh, well, do you know what manner of woman this is that does this? And yeah. so he asked that question. He says, you know, who forgives, you know, more, the one who has been forgiven little or the one who has been forgiven a lot? And, yeah. you know, uh, and then guess what? You know, of course, he answered correctly. And he says, well, I suppose the one who has been forgiven much forgives 
more, you know, much also. Well, that's, that, uh, that principle applies to judgment too. The ones who have been not judged most by our God will have a tendency to go ahead and not judge others, you know, yeah. a lot also, because we passed from that judgment, right? So we don't judge others. We forgive easy. We f- we're patient with others. We're loving. We're gracious because God has been gracious to us. This is the motivating factor. This is the fruit of the spirit that God, it doesn't, he, he says, be ye filled with the spirit because he knows that being filled with the spirit will produce the fruit of the spirit. It's not the fruit of Walter. Yeah. It's the fruit of the spirit, which is, you know, patience and gentleness and kindness and all these virtues, you know, that uh, that we are called to do. It's not abstinence. It's not drinking less. He didn't say take less drugs, take exactly. more drinking, <laughs> stop doing this, start doing that. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. And I think a lot of people mistaken that these virtues, which are all within the canopy of love, that are exercised in the midst of a people that are failing, okay? <laughs> you know, like you can only be patient with somebody that drives you nuts. Okay? Right. <laughs> you can only not judge a person with somebody that's, what is it, doing wrong, you know? Right. And so we're exercising these virtues with that perspective in mind. And I think that's, you know, key for us to understand. And once you grab a, grab a hold of that, boy, it's just so freeing. And it's so easy, you know, for, for us to just be used of the Lord. And, you know, people just want to talk with you and they want to share, you know. They say, my goodness. And then they share their weaknesses and where they fail. It says, hey, there's a better way, you know, and it's Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Man, it's amazing how like God changes a person. Like, you know, we can actually. I mean, since we got time, I, and again, I just want to mention this uh, for everyone. You know, you know, it's not just me and Walter up here talking. If you guys want to come down there, the link is actually on uh, both all, all the pages right now. So, and then on top of that, in the live chat, if you look up top, it's actually pinned to the top. There's the link to the stream yard, so you guys can actually join it if you want to. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think we can actually get into a little bit of testimony since no one else is coming up just yet. I mean, uh, I don't think I've ever given my testimony, uh, and it's pretty quick. I mean, it's not like some dramatic, to be honest. Um, <laughs> long story short, um, you know, uh, I, it really starts with my mom, and my mom she uh, became saved at the, I believe the age of twenty eight, and that was like a year before I was actually born. And uh, this is after she divorced my my father and everything. Uh, long story short, that was. It was <clears throat> It was an abusive relationship, so she had to get out of there. She moved from like three or four different states until we got to Chicago, and that's where we were. Uh, when she got saved, she started you know, looking at all these different teachings. I remember uh, she actually listened to Kenneth Copeland at first and all these other Word of Faith teachers. You know, most Christians, they get into that the first time, you know. Uh, I remember my uh, great-grandmother as well. She would come over as well and, and teach uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, uh, theology. She was Jehovah's Witness. And um, she, my mom almost got drawn into that. My uncle Wesley, he's the one who actually stopped her from doing that and told her, like, you know, this is not the way and provided her with the book of Walter Martin. That was so, great. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's how we got started. We got to start with Walter Martin as far as like, I know. I know. I love that man. I hung out with his crowd and met with Walter Martin. I've got a signed really? copy of his Kingdom of the Cults book and everything. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good, he was a good man. He was a, he was a fireball, but a down-to-earth man. Yeah. yeah you know what? He reached a lot of people, and, and he had an effect on my life, obviously. Otherwise, I might have been Jehovah's Witness, who, for all we know. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, my, my mom, we prayed out the window every single night together. I, I remember, like, uh, when I was four years old, my earliest memories was, you know, her praying. And she asked me to pray. And I would just pray on for, like, probably a good 30 minutes, you know, thanking God for the cars, the air, <laughs> anything I think of. But, you know what, that's why God loves children, though, because, like, <laughs> they're thankful for just about anything, you know, that God does for them. And then, you know, um, I grew up and you know, my mom taught me everything I knew about the word of God. She got remarried when I was five. And, 
you know, again, like one of my biggest memories as far as she was concerned was that she saw a heresy within the church. And then she was the only one who got up in the middle of the, the church and told people the truth, like what was going on. I don't remember exactly like the, you know, the whole situation, but I just remember her boldness to go ahead and stand on the, on the word of God. And, you know, that, again, that took an effect on me. This is probably one of the main reasons why I'm here today is because of her. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I got introduced to a lot of good men. Uh, there was a guy named Solomon who uh, taught me about evangelism. He he introduced me to Ray Comfort first. I think that's when uh, Way of the Master first got started when I was like 13 years old. And I got a copy of the Evidence Bible. I got the uh, the School of uh, Evangelism that the first time that came out. Uh, so yeah, I <laughs> I was I was I'm thankful for God for that for that foundation. You know, um, I mean. And just get into this a little bit. I mean, they say this about black men that, you know, we're, you know, statistically, we're more likely to have like baby mamas and, you know, multiple kids and all this sort of stuff. And God, he brought, you know, he kept me from all those things. And I, and I thank him for that. Um, and of course, being raised in the projects, you know, that you would think, you know, you got drugs everywhere mm-hmm. and, and, you know, gangs, all that sort of stuff in inner city of Chicago. But God kept me from all that stuff. So you're um, an anomaly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what people would say. <laughs> The Lord put a hedge around you, boy, I tell you. You know what? I mean, God, like I said, he protected me from a whole lot. I mean, I, you know, promised God to keep my purity. And you know what? I remember in high school, he used to make fun of me. I mean, again, being a black guy, telling people like, hey, I'm waiting to get married. They, man, they used to laugh me to scorn. You know, like, that, there's no other world where you can do that. You know, and I'm just like, hey, I love God. I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, yeah. Um but again, this again, this is all really a story of, of like what God has done in my life because it doesn't come with no no amount of failure. I mean, uh, I got into porn when I was about twelve years old, and so I got exposed to that world, and uh, it was hard for me to get out of that. I mean, I didn't really get out of uh, like watching porn until I was about probably like eighteen, you know. Um, Long story short, my friend of mine, his name is Kevin. He was like one of my youth leaders, and he he had the same experience when he was young. He walked me through everything. He used to pray with me, um, you know, after um, uh, study school or, or club, whatever. He he, you know, walked me back home. We talk about different things that's been going on. I'm mean, the the guys that's been in my life has been really impactful, and especially like helped me overcome certain sins I would have you know struggled with for the rest of my life. Um, you know, and, you know, came over here to St. Louis and how I came over to St. Louis is a kind of a weird experience because if I told you guys, you'd probably be like, ain't no way in the world. But um, I remember I was uh, 19 years old. It was on a Sunday morning. I was laying in bed and uh, I heard someone say, are you going to go to church? I thought it was my mom. And so I was like, no, nah, I ain't going to church. You know, I just roll over, pull the cover back over. And then I hear the voice again say, hey, go to church. And so I get up thinking it's my mom. Because I hear the door closing and everything. I, I get up and I, I look at my mom. She's sound asleep, snoring. And so, like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I try to rationalize everything for I said, maybe it's just me, whatever. But I said, you know what, Lord, if this is really you telling me to go to church, I said, you know what, I'm going to go to church. So I got on my uh, stepdad's bike and started going to this church. It's like a house church, probably like uh, a few miles outside of where I lived. And so, you know, the bright, the bike broke down probably like a few times before I got there. Every time I wanted to go ahead and go back home, I hear, keep hearing, go to church. Mm-hmm. And so when I, when I finally go to church, you know, the pastor, he's preaching about evangelism. He's talking about, you know, giving out the gospel and all this sort of stuff. And he asked me, you know, after the whole sermon, he said, you know, you ever thought about being an evangelist? Have you ever thought about, you know, telling people about the gospel, going out there? And I said, well, yeah, you know, I do stuff online a little bit. You know, I'm not really wanting to do that right now. I'm trying to join the military. Um, and so, you know, after all that was said and done, later that night, uh, my another friend of mine invited me to go to an evening church. So I go to an evening church. Pastor's preaching about the same exact thing. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, if you really want me to uh, go ahead and do this, show me where I got to go. And so I get a call from a school down here in St. Louis say, hey, we got a place open if you want to take it. You know, um, it's, it's a place called Job Course. Some of you guys may have known it. It's not a really good place. But nonetheless, I said, Lord, if this is where you want me to go, I'm going to go. So I go to St. Louis. I hate it there. <laughs> I, still hate it. I still hate it. Here. You're still and, hating uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, when I got to St. Louis, got to this uh, place, and I'm, I'm hating everything about it. I'm just like, I just don't want to be here. I should be back, you know, going to college. I should be going to the military and all this sort of stuff. And I said, Lord, if you really want to be here, show me the first person I got a witness to. As soon as I get done saying that prayer, 
someone comes up to me and say, hey, what you doing? And I said, I'm reading the Bible. What's it look like? <laughs> so I'm over here just mean. <laughs> 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 you sound like you were pissed off or something like that. You know, I'm just right. the Bible. What do you want? <laughs> I was. I did not want to be here at all, at, at all. But uh, you know what? After that, you know, I started sharing the gospel with him. I started going through the scriptures. He kept asking question after question. Mm -hmm. And so later, you know, as time went on, I became room captain. So I was in charge of like eight different guys. And so uh, part of it, I said, you know what? Everyone has to do Bible study every single night. We're going to do this thing. And so, um, you know, one guy, he didn't want to hear nothing I had to say. He was in bed, just turned over, you know, act like he's not listening. Long, you know, long story short about him, he contacts me 10 years later to tell me he, now, he, now he believes in Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. So, you know, you never know how the word is actually going to reach out to people. So, yeah. you know, uh, even back then, I called it the Knights of God because, you know, I, I, I like the whole idea about the Knights. I like the idea of like soldiering for the Lord, um, just, you know, fight the enemy, that sort of thing. Uh, so I kept that name. That's where the name came, you know, came from. Uh, even before that, I used it for a gaming clan. I used to be a part of with me and my mom. So uh, after it was all said and done, it got me to where I'm at right now. Married, kids. Uh, well, not my kids, but my, you know, my wife's kids. I got married, you know, inherited. And you know, it's it's been good. I mean, here I am talking to a whole lot of people about the Word of God. Still, you know, God still keeps me doing this, and I'm thankful for it. I really am thankful. Um, you know, he kept me out of a whole lot of trouble I could have been in. Uh, he he led me to reach other people and those who have been saved through it. I thank God for it. Um, again, he also kept me humble through it because, again, it's not about me at all. It's all about what he's done because originally Desmond didn't want to do nothing like this. <laughs> it was all God, all God. Absolutely. And, and I see Rob yeah. over there. He said, you hate St. Louis. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> hey rob how's it going man <laughs> he's from here too so <laughs> yeah he should join in on with i'm joining with us yeah anyway did you want me to share my testimony or hey it's open dialogue whatever you want to do man. okay yeah, yeah yeah well i mean you know i i was born in japan okay so i was raised in japanese culture to a certain extent but uh, I was raised Mormon. My dad was a Mormon. And uh, so, you know, I remember being pretty heavily involved in the Mormon church, even over in Japan at the Mormon church in Petaluma, California, over there in Washington, you know, uh, what is it, state? And, you know, we, I remember that, you know, and uh, uh, being involved in, in the Mormon church. But, uh, my dad, at the age of 13, allowed me to go to a Baptist church. Uh, he, this was, this was during the time that um, uh, there was a lot of racial tensions, uh, you know, in the United States with the blacks. Yeah. And um, it was during the time of Martin Luther King. So I'm, I was a pretty old guy. I'm a pretty old guy. <laughs> And I remember, um, and, and maybe I could have been a little bit younger than that, but uh, uh, I remember in 1968, uh, the, uh, the Mormons had voted in the understanding that blacks and or people of darker skin could assume the priesthood. Yeah. And it all stemmed from uh, some Mormon missionaries down in Brazil getting into trouble with some of the ladies down in Brazil. And so the president had decided to take what was called an eternal statute. Uh, and, and if people don't realize this, before this, before the, the people who were of darker skin were, were cursed in, according to, uh, the Mormons. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people don't know that it's, it's a very racial thing going on within the Mormon church, especially during that time. And, uh, uh, what ended up happening is that law changed that eternal statute given by God that would never change changed. Right. And of course my dad, he was like, well, how in the world could an eternal statute change, you know, and all that stuff? So it was during this time 
that he was having tension. And, you know, I remember it was in 1968 that he wrote the letter to them. And my dad, you know, I wouldn't, he was not prejudiced uh, because, you know, I mean, he he coached an all-black football team and he loved these guys and all of the guys, you know, they, he'd always be with them, you know, and they were the best, you know, always the best players and all that stuff, you know, great, you know, good, he was a great football coach. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, he, he just was involved in the Mormon church and he believed that eternal statutes should be, should be a certain way. And so during this time, I think it was during that time that he would have allowed me to go ahead and be and go to a, a Baptist church. So it was really weird. And so I went to a Baptist, uh, what is it, church, and then I was invited to a summer camp, and I walked down the aisle and accepted Jesus, but I didn't know who Jesus was. I believed Jesus as a Mormon, no. right? right? And uh, so... So I had, from that time forward, I had an amalgamation of Christianity and Mormon beliefs all the way up until, you know, I was around 28 years old when I find myself at John MacArthur's church. Now, I'd been arguing with Christians, you know, all this time, you know, about the deity of Christ and different issues and so on and so forth. And I was, you know, really messed up, you know. And uh, I remember um, uh, going to John MacArthur's church and I went to, I decided to go ahead and go to some seminary class because they thought I was Christian and um, uh, went to a Bible's difficulty class, you know, and, um, and we, we studied how the Bible was put together and how we could rely on the scriptures. And, you know, that, that, e you know, one of the evenings I went back home and I went back to my wife. I was married now. And I went back to my wife. I says, man, I, I don't think I, I can deny the deity of Christ. I believe he's the God, the creators of the heavens and the earth, you know. Um, and um, I understood him differently than I did, you know, uh, before. Yeah. And then that was it. It just changed my whole life and everything. Now, you know, like with you, when I was younger, I was I got involved in pornography and stuff like that. I didn't do drugs. I didn't do drinking because I was more Mormon. Yeah. But, you know, I got involved in pornography via my artwork. I, I was an artist and I, I love to draw faces and human anatomy and so on and so forth. But in the process of drawing human anatomy, I started reading articles that were in these magazines that I would acquire that my family didn't think anything of it because they were thinking that I was just drawing the human anatomy and not reading the articles. But I ended up getting addicted to that. Yeah. Okay. Now, when I became a Christian, man, all of that just went, went away. You know what I mean? I got involved in John MacArthur's church, started a ministry. Uh, what is it? Helped him out, helped, you know, in other ministries within MacArthur's church. So I, I established a, an apologetics ministry over there called Task and was also helping seminary students of his to learn how to share their faith and defend the faith and so on and so forth. I was heavily involved in it. Eventually, I ended up becoming a five-point Calvinist. And then me being a five-point Calvinist, being that I believe that, that Christ died for not every individual, but uh, um, only for the elect, I was booted out. And, man, that was such a crushing thing to me. And so, you wait, know, wait, wait. So you're you're in a wait. Were you in John MacArthur's church? You're booted yes. for being a five point. Wait, you're booted. You're booted for being a five point Calvinist. Yes, because Mark, John MacArthur's church was not a five point Calvinist church at the time. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Didn't oh, you didn't man. know that, right? So some of his older commentaries are a little bit different. I tried to get on to a show with Sam Shamoon. He was reading from an old commentary. And I knew that John MacArthur's views changed on the commentaries that he had written. Yeah. Right? And so, uh, what is it? Um, uh, I, um, 
uh, ended up, uh, what is it, getting booted out, and then ended up, uh, what is it, joining a church, uh, what is it, over there next to the master's college, master's seminary, and now is called the master's university, right? And so it's a seminary. And I ended up being ahead of the board of deacons over there and stuff like that. I taught Sunday school, whatever, and got involved, you know, heavily over there. But the problems that I had in that church followed me into this one. Yeah. Okay. And what ended up happening is, you know what? I tell you, and, and this is for the young men that are out there. Um. And I'm going to be real transparent with you guys, okay? Don't think that when you become a Christian that all your problems and your struggles go away. Some of these old vices that you fed yourself when you were young could very well creep up on you. Now, I'm not blaming my circumstances, but what ended up happening is the old addiction that I had and that I had put away for like, you know, a decade or whatever started to come back up again. And even in the midst of my marriage, okay, and it would cause, it caused me to be unfaithful to my wife, okay? And so what I did is nobody knew this, okay? Nobody but during a, a, what is it, a men's retreat, I ended up uh, uh, going to this men's retreat. And you know how men's retreats are. You know, there were several churches that gathered together. Okay, and here I was involved in the leadership of the church. And all these men, there must have been over 300 men that went to this retreat in this auditorium. And everything, and I knew that I, I had to go ahead and deal with this. And so um, they were. There was a man that was a speaker. I don't know his name, but he talked about crossing the river. And and what crossing the river was, was going ahead and really sharing with the brothers or the body of Christ your sins, what you were struggling with. Well, heck, by this time, that old vice turned into pornography, not only magazines, not only movies, but actually visiting, you know, bookstores and strip clubs and so on and so forth. It got that bad. And here I am in Southern California, the mecca of pornography in Los Angeles they probably put out 80% of the pornography in the world today, okay? And um, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a bastion for, you know, just vile stuff. And um, the reason why I share these things is because we think that sometimes when we come to Christ that we are not vulnerable to that. But we must keep alert and so what ended up happening is during this meeting, all these guys were jump, you know, popping up and says, you know what, I got a sin. You know, I'm, you know, I got angry at my wife and, you know, so on and so forth. I just need to control that. Another guy would stand up. He says, I'm, uh, what is it? You know what? I got a problem with, you know, lust or whatever. Another guy would come up and, you know, you know, I, I I'm driving seventy miles per hour in a sixty mile per hour zone. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, and all these guys are popping up, but you know, all of these, all of these things that they were sharing. Here I am. I'm just crushed inside. I'm, I am just breaking down. I am beside myself. And uh, I says, what do I do? How can I share my sin? And man, I just stood up. And I remember that. I remember standing up. 
and looking at everybody. And I just shared with them, I says, my name is Walter Robertson. I'm a deacon at this church and I head up the, the deacon board. I'm a Sunday school teacher. Da, 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 da. Gave my description. And I have a problem. I got a big problem. And I need for you guys. Just forgive me. And I shared everything. I shared all my dirty laundry. You could hear a pin drop. You could hear a pin drop. And all I could do is just cry. I sobbed like a baby. Uh, I, uh, it's emotional. Yeah. It's real. The battle with you young men is real. And don't think that because you are a Christian and you're involved heavily into certain things that you cannot be touched. But you know what? What ended up happening is that everybody, all the people, my church members and everything, all the guys came around me. And one by one, by one by one, they came and they embraced me. And they held on to me. Even men that I didn't know from other churches. And they whispered. I'm right there with you. I know what you're going through. Yeah. These men had the same struggles. But they weren't. Men are very private individuals. They don't want to expose their weaknesses or share their failures. Now, mind you, I did not get caught. I volunteered to step down from leadership. Yeah. The, after the meeting was over, the speaker asked me to come down. He says, Walter. He says, you realize what you've done? I says, well, yeah, I think that I do. I think I crossed the river. He says, you know what? You're the only one that crossed the river. <laughs> I says, well, you know what? I feel good now that I crossed the river. I got that off my shoulders. And I know that I'm, you know, I just lay all of that at the feet of Christ. And I got a lot of friends now. This is the corker, Desmond. And what he says is, you don't understand, Walter. You don't understand. You don't have any friends. Because your friends would have crossed the river with you. No. That's true. And so I remember 
them going ahead and, you know, whispering in my ears, yeah, we'll get together. Let's get together. Let's go ahead and get together. Okay, yes, let's do this. The, you know, all this stuff. And I remembered, yeah, we're, we're, this is going to be great, you know. And you know what? None of them ever came around. What's that all about? Yeah. What's that all about? That man was right. That speaker was right. Your friends will cross the river with you. And when we come to that point in our lives where we're not at that point where we're going ahead and putting on a mask with each other, but we share with each other, our brothers and our sisters, our failures in life. Therein lies that true fellowship. We can argue doctrine all we want. We can argue whether or not, you know, the new birth precedes faith or faith precedes the new birth or whatever the deal is. Uh, we can argue modalism and Trinitarianism and all that stuff. But if you haven't come to grips with your sin and you realize that God has so forgiven you, guess what? It's easy for you to not worry about the accolades of men anymore. Exactly. It's easy for you to not worry about what men think of you, even though I share these things with you. I open up my heart as an old man. I'm almost 65 years old. And a lot of you guys are in your 30s, 40s, you know, whatever. To me, you're young men still, right? right. But what I'm sharing with you is, you know, be on the watch. Don't think that these vices will not rise up against you. Even if you think that marriage, when you get married and you think that all of your problems, your sexual problems or sins that you had, you think that you could rid yourselves of those things, that's when you should be most watchful. Exactly. Because it'll happen right in your marriage. And today, with the technology that's available to us. It's way too easy. It's way too easy. It's way too easy to flip this phone. Way too easy to do this. Keep yourself busy. Keep yourself busy with your, your family, with your work, with your relationships of, and your friends and with the Lord especially and fellowship with each other. And don't leave time for foolishness because an idle mind is a devil's workshop, believe me. Yeah. You know, but I share these things. But the Lord, he pulled that stuff from me, by golly, but it's very hard. It kept on going. It wasn't like instantaneous, bam, that's it. It's over with. But the Lord just kept on. And I would never say that I have those things ever under control. No. Because the eye for the man is always fed. We feed these things daily with our eyes. But you have to be strong. You have to go ahead and really embrace Christ and I'm telling you that's when you're going to have victory over those things I know. you know this is just a fair warning um, the Lord has just so blessed me you know and uh, and with you know 34 and a half years of great years there were some ups and downs in those things my wife maybe for some lady listeners if there's any lady listeners my wife was just devastated at the thought that her quote unquote perfect man could have ever done something like that i mean it was like it was like a, a running back getting sideswiped yeah. 
And boy, I tell you, and it had an effect on our marriage. But divorce wasn't an option. And she loved me to the bitter end. Praise be to God that I had a wife like her. Amen. What was her name? Debbie. Debbie. Yeah. 34 and a half years of marriage. I lost her three years ago, three years ago on August the 8th. So, you know, um, just be watchful. That's my testimony, sir. The Lord saved me. Amen. And he saved me during the time, at a certain time, but he never let me go. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. No one shall snatch them out of my father's hand. The, the issue is who can separate us from the love of God, right? Amen. No. Amen. You know, what? Every time, even if you try to walk away, you can't. He, he won't let you go. Uh, so much he loves you. That's exactly and, right. I wanted to add a little more to that, but before we do, um, I can't ever say her name, but MSICU 1221, um, she's been on here quite a bit, but she asked the question, she said, Walter, once you finally understood the power of grace, did it help you move further with your walk with Jesus? Of course. Of course it did. And it continues to do so. That's the great thing, you know. So, you know, there's many battles that you will encounter in your life but once the lord is there we can always come back to the lord right knowing that despite our failures he's going to utilize those failures in your life to cause growth i wouldn't have been able to share these stories unless i've gone through them myself you, you are able to teach stories or you're able to teach others and warn others if you've gone through the process yourself. Exactly. And so the Lord, look it. I think I was at a time in my life when I was a Christian, when I first became a Christian, and then I started going ahead and getting involved. I started saturating myself with the Word of God and just reading it and studying it and everything else. Being involved in one of the best churches, I think, even to this day, John MacArthur's church, a great preacher, you know what I mean, and a pastor and all that stuff. Man, what an organization that has become. And to be a part of that, what, what ends up happening is the Lord says, knowledge puffeth up. And boy, it does. Oh, yeah. What happens is that you start to, start to depend on your knowledge and what you know. And what the Lord has to do is he has to break that down because what you've done is you've really forgotten the Savior. And what he will do, and he, I believe that he did this with me because I was rising to the top real fast. Yeah. What happened to, <laughs> what happened to Walter? I say that's the devil right there, y'all. <laughs> the, uh, the discussion was getting really good. I think his phone may have died. Let me just get him a message really quick. Um, let me see where he is at. Uh, just send him a message, y'all. Uh, but again, I appreciate everyone who came in. Uh, Walter's testimony is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, but I, want, I just wanted to just say this because he's, he's talking to the young men and the vices that we deal with. Um, I know for me personally, uh, I've been married for about almost two years now, so I'm a, I'm technically new, newly wed now still. Um, you know, and I, like I said earlier, I was doing pornography myself and even then, even after I got up, it's still, you know, still a struggle. It's still hard to, you know, resist. Uh, one of the main issues I have is just that my wife, she is in Suriname, which is a country north of Brazil. And, you know, so she's not here and we're going through the whole visa process. So things, you know, things are a little rough and, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes it's easy to get back into that bachelor mindset, you know, and the fact of the matter is I'm not, I'm a married man. 
you know, and I thank God for just keeping me from a lot of different temptations. But again, like he mentioned, um, yeah, you can just open the phone, and, and I mean, again, the uh, the lust of the eye is still adultery. So, and it, it is rough. It's always rough, um, you know. So yeah, it's it's affected my marriage as well. And you know, I just thank God for uh, you know for Him to grace my wife, you know, just to be patient with me um, to work in these things. But no, I, I definitely am thankful for Walter's testimony. You know, like we're all we're all just getting into it, <laughs> and now he's gone. But I did get a message uh, from him, and uh, Walter said he'll get on. I think his phone just died. But, uh, yeah, no, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, guys, I do want to mention this. Uh, so Saturday, uh, we're going to do another open dialogue where we can just talk about whatever. If you guys are scared, look, hey, we're all friendly guys up here. You guys seen us on here before. Uh, again, we just love to talk about the Bible testimonies, whatever it is in order to edify the body. You know, uh, somebody called this church one time. It's not no church or anything like not well i mean it is but you know what i mean uh it's just you know body believers who's getting together to talk about experiences talk about god's word uh talk about you know just the goodness of who he is talk about everything about god and you just just show, show that love that we have for him um but no I, I i thank god for each and every last one of you guys who came through um i see dylan over here um rob var uh, Tim from Conversations with Christians. That's also a good channel to check out. Uh, check out Conversations with Christians on YouTube. Uh, of course, we got Angie. Uh, we got Aunt, yeah, Tanner from Answers from the AV. We got Lafonso. I just want to thank and Shayla. I just want to thank everyone who just came on through. It's, again, it's been a, a pleasure just to have all the comments, just seeing you guys talking, uh, just being able to have this discussion again with Walter. I mean, I wish he'd just hurry up and come on back. Oh, man, come on. <laughs> and then there's AK. Hey, good good to see you, AK. Oh, no, no problem, Tim. No problem. And also, let me, while we're doing shout outs, right? AK Richardson, when you guys get a chance, check out his channel, uh, Church of Christ uh, Pastor or Preacher, rather. And uh, he has a lot of different discussions. Um, I think the difference between him and I is that, you know, he believed bapti water baptism was necessary. I wouldn't. But other than that, you know, a great channel to check out. Um, you know, he, te he says a lot of a lot of truth there. And again, uh, a guy that I would definitely recommend as far as, you know, checking out his stuff and learning what he got to say. Just like anyone else. Uh, let me see. And she, uh, and I'm just gonna read what she says. So, as a female, I've always believed that the enemy is very much aware of a man's weakness, usually, uh, which is usually sex. He will use everything in his means to get every man that has a relationship with Jesus. That is very true. Um, some of the one of the main main things uh, for me. I mean, I was never that guy to like, you know, I was never that guy to sleep around. And I kept my purity up until the age of 26, and. Um, you know, it's, you know, I fell into, I fell into sin at that time and it was rough. It was definitely rough because I realized what I did against God. Um, and again, that's, and then this is actually me just coming up for the first time, just telling people about that, except for my friends, those who are close to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kept my uh, period up until the age of 26 and, you know, I, I thank God just for, um, Using even using that experience to help me learn, you know, because I think sometimes we can walk in a certain way and think we got it all together, and then when you fall, then you start to realize I'm not all that, you know. Uh, it, things like that has also kept me humble because I know that as you know, as a man or as a woman, you know, we're all fallible, we're all able to fall, and so you know, I'm not that kind of guy who just put myself over anybody else. <laughs> Definitely after experiences I've experienced myself, you know. Um, you know, God has saved us and we didn't deserve to be saved. We all deserve hellfire. You know, we think about all the wickedness that we have done, you know, all the things we did against God's law. So even if it's something small, like, you know, you said a little small lie, even then that's a sin, you know, it, it, it's a sin worthy of death. I mean, it says in uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse eight, that all liars have their place in the lake of fire. You know, you got to think about that. It's like, you know, sin, no matter how big or small it is, it's all worthy of death. And so, you know, we all have a testimony of being saved from that thing. What Christ died for was that very thing that separates us from God. And let me see, Lafonso. He says, how do you all in the live chat understand this verse? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. I'm going to have to go ahead and study that myself. Um Walter probably would have that answer if he hurry up and get on. But I had to go ahead and look into that myself. Hang on. He just messaged me again. 
Yeah, let me see what's going on here. He said he don't know what happened. <laughs> let me see if he can get back on. But yeah. JP in the house as well. He said he heard about Walter's testimony a few months back. He's a brave Christian to keep uh, to keep sharing that trial. Yes, he is. Amen for that. Um, yeah, those in the live chat as well, take a look at Lafonso's uh, question as well. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. How do we take that verse? Um, I'm going to take a look at that. And next uh, open discussion, I'm going to get into that myself. Uh, AK, he mentioned. Uh, Desmond, I, I should probably know this, but what's your stand on, on uh, OSAS? In other words, um, once saved, always saved. I, I would say once saved, always saved, if you're truly saved. So in other words, if you are if you truly believe in Christ, you won't depart from the faith. Uh, the verses that Walter used, for example, that, you know, uh, I'm just using this off the top of my head. Again, I don't have the Bible right in front of me right now. But uh, those that the, uh, the Father gives to the Lord Jesus, he will not, he will not lose. And I believe that's in John chapter 6. I totally believe that. And the reason why is because when I take a look at verses like uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, the Holy Spirit seals it to the day of redemption. When I look at verses like what Walter just gave in John chapter 6, uh, when I look at um, uh, Matthew chapter 7, even we're looking at those who endure to the end. Well, how do we endure to the end? We endure to the end because of Christ saving us by his blood. And of course, the Holy Spirit sealing us until that day. So the way we're able to endure is because we have the blood of Christ, because we have the seal on the Holy Spirit. There's no way we can actually fall away. Uh, that's not to say we can't what I would call backsliding, of course, we know we might get into sin and we might grieve the Holy Spirit, but God will never leave us in the place that would, uh, that would dishonor him. He will always bring us back to him. And that's what I've personally experienced my own self. Uh, when I was younger, I tried to go ahead and walk away from the faith. <laughs> that did not work. Every time I tried, you know, God made it clear that he is God, that he is uh, always there. Even when I was faithless, he was faithful. You know, um, I even remember when the bus broke down one time, we're out there in Wisconsin, 90, 90 degree weather, extraordinarily hot at that time of the year. And um, and the bus, when the bus broke down, no AC, we out there. And one of my friends was like, well, if we pray, maybe God will, you know, fix the bus for us. Because the, the guy who was working on the bus, he didn't know what was going on. And so we're like, okay, let's go ahead and pray. As soon as we get done praying, the bus came back up. Now, some people would say that, hey, that's coincidence. I think that's a very weird coincidence because, again, the mechanic couldn't even figure out what was going on. And yet, as soon as we get done praying, the bus comes on, you know. So, I mean, for me, small stuff even like that, it showed me the goodness of God and him being faithful towards us. Um, I want to just put this up here. I truly respect and uh, Walter. That's difficult to do, but but with Jesus, nothing is impossible. Or nothing's impossible. Remember, Jesus took all of our shame. Amen for that. Definitely, amen, amen. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you, brothers and sisters out there as well. Just go ahead and have this discussion. I'm still trying to get Walter back up here. He said, "He said, I hold on. Let me try to send another invite." And I'm gonna try to get our brother Walter up here. about this link yeah guys unfortunately i might not be able to get him back up <laughs> i don't know i'm still waiting on him oh uh, let me read this here from jp there's walter how's it going i had to use my phone oh okay what happened your uh, tablet died no my whole computer went down uh, an upgrade just automatically started oh really and, uh, <laughs> yeah, i couldn't believe it Anyways, I don't even know where I was at. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, anyway. you know what? You, you encouraged quite a, quite, a bit, uh, quite a bit of people in here. They, they are all thankful for what you shared. Um, I mean, just to have that testimony is really tough to even share. I know for me, um, I mean, it's tough for me to share certain things. Even like some like, you know, like pornography, even though everyone's you know, gone through that, it's still hard for me to share because, again, you know, there's people that know me. And they're like, Desmond, you're in, you're into that, you know? And it's kind of like, you know, sometimes it's hard to share that because you you don't want to be shamed, you know? And, you know, I I, hold, I think of myself as a bold guy, but when, when intimate stuff like that comes out, it's kind of hard to hold that same boldness. And again, that's it's, it's only through the grace of God, like you mentioned, that you're able to share stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it's, it is. It's the most difficult thing to go ahead and share your failures. Hey, you know? And, hold and on, hold on, Walter. Friends. There's there's my brother Phil right there. Hey Phil, how you doing, my man? <laughs> hey brothers. 
I, I hope <laughs> I hope and trust I didn't make your eardrums drool. No, I uh I I I had to leave to have some supper with the wife because she was listening to uh you know one of these American prophets who uh discuss the things that God's gonna do and I respect these guys with with their massive amount of followers, but after a while, you get tired of hearing what God's going to do when God's already told us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well. hey, uh, so, Phil, hey, since uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen you in like forever down here. And by the way, Rob, he's also from St. Louis. He's the one who make the Murfords. Uh, Rob, he's also in St. Louis. So he's probably seen your work around. Uh, but yeah, uh, Phil, man, long time no see. <laughs> So I'm, I'm happy to see you, man. Des, I, I, I was reminded, Teresa, that the Knights sat at the round table while the rectangle table of our dining room several years ago. And Rob, I was uh, the the one the the one uh, uh, strange looking guy among Des and his friends. Uh, and we, well, we 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 would we would we would we would meet in various. Uh, places and there really was the knights and one of the brothers went to the military one of the brothers went off and got married one of the brothers did this one of the brothers did that oh excuse the pink glasses by the way there well i need to put the, I, I need to put these back on because they're my cheap readers that I, my reading glasses that i get from the dollar store here in ferguson but uh yeah so when your knights came on i I love this, uh, this 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 setup you got here, Des. It's really cool. I saw the, the Crusaders, and by the way, the Crusaders, the Knights have gotten a bad woke rap, haven't they? Oh, yeah. You oh, know, yeah. the Crusaders, and I was starting to think that they that they really were the bad guys that the 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 anti everything was trying to uh, erase from history, but but in reality. There was just some Christians that said, well, we got to stop this scourge, you know? So they, they went on these nights, stopped the Islamic onslaught at the gate. And, and they, they stopped it at Europe. And uh, so I just heard, I read today, uh, some team is dropping the, a uh, St. Louis team is, is dropping the name Crusaders because, be, be because of the wars against the Crusaders and, and and Muslims, but having just come back from Pakistan, oh my gosh, it's so surreal coming back here because we we, we lay out the red carpet here in our freedom loving co country for any any minority. And um, you were right. I was in Pakistan and I was there a month for a third time. Came back, and the reality is this. There are millions of minority Christians enslaved, enslaved to Muslim uh, factory farm and brickyard owners, and 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 you know what? It's not just there's there's my there's lower caste Muslims and Hindus who are also enslaved. These are these are the poor of Pakistan who never get the multiple. They never get dollar one of the multiple millions and billions the USA sends to Pakistan. We've made four Pakistani generals so stinking wealthy. They, they they have left Pakistan. And now I read this morning the IMF and the EU are re ready to throw another billion dollars to Pakistan. We, it just, we just make very, very, very rich government officials. So none of it goes to the people. None of it goes to the poor. Our, our Christian uh, brothers and sisters by the millions are in this slavery called bonded labor. So anyway, uh, the, let the knights arise because there, there's still an onslaught. Uh, but I, I chose, instead of staying here and defending our country, I decided to launch my own little crusade on the other side of the earth. Yes. The, the 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 right crusade the, the spiritual crusade you know instead of fighting you know flesh and blood you're actually doing this you know fighting against the spiritual powers that was over there like, um, oh man you, 
And I, I know you experienced Christianity over there as compared to over here. I know it's like night and day. What's some of your experiences there with the Christians there? Well, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm glad you're directing it back to to the the more eternal thing because when you guys first came on, you were giving a little testimony uh, here and there. The one thing that I think blew my mind even more than this than this modern day slavery is this. And let's see if I can say this without crying. Uh, I never experienced such a powerful love of Christ, of the Holy Spirit, of the Father, of God. I've never experienced this except in the middle of the suffering of the Christians of Pakistan. I tell you what, and, and this is something else. But so when I come back to the USA, it's so surreal. I, you know, I can turn someone into rage just by moving into the lane, even though because they had to lift their foot off of the gas pedal and put it onto the brake. And uh, so, so surreal coming back here. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm in a daze. I'm like, what am I doing back in this country? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife lives here. I needed to come back to my, my, to my honey, but. They, even though their lives have been used up by these brick masters, even though they've been beaten by the brick masters, even though their children's educational years have been robbed, they have no hate. They have no bitterness. They have no unforgiveness for the brick masters. I can't wrap my head around that. They, so, and and this is something else. I, I, I can't, they, they have hope in God. They're hope in God. Is so strong. Even I met one old man who had been there, 50, been in bonded labor 50 years. He had buried his wife in the brickyard. He's the only guy I who ever said, I have no hope. I have yeah. hope. And, and this is something else. So, so I come back with even more of a proof that, that <laughs> God of the, that our God is real, that our God is true because of the mercy. Uh, and, and so you have this cry of Islamophobia with Imran Khan, the president, crying out Islamophobia. And he and, and yet our our Christian young ladies over there uh, every day, there's there's two or three Hindus or Christians who are kidnapped, raped and forced to convert to Islam. So, you know, you will never hear that on our media or on the Pakistani media. I hear it from Christian pastors who who send me th uh, horrible news like this all the time. Now, thank you, Jesus, that uh, there are some brave humanitarians who risk their lives to, to just go plunk themselves in the middle of a police station. And they, they insist, they insist on justice being done. Sometimes they get thrown into jail. But I've met some of these, uh, especially one of these brave, brave men who shouldn't be walking the, the, the ground of Pakistan. Because if, if the few brave Christians who are brave enough to go and, 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 and shout for justice, don't, don't do it. The police won't, they won't bring justice. They just don't bring justice. So right now we're, Pakistan really has laws. They got laws. They got laws on their books, but they the laws never made, make it out of the gate of parliament because the entire country is corrupt. The entire country lives on bribery. This is why 20,000 massive brickyards full of millions of minority Christian and, and a few Muslim and Hindu slaves exists because of this bribery. But, but back to their faith. They are illiterate. They've been robbed of education. So very few bonded laborers, and I can explain what a bonded laborer is. They, very few of them can read or write Urdu, their mother tongue. So, uh, so uh, pastors go into these places and, and, they, and they teach and preach the gospel. The people are more starving for the word of God than they are even food. And, and most of the time they're starving for food. But they would rather sit and feast and they'll even forget about eating if someone is bringing the gospel to them. So uh, there, there, there are ministries, small ministries that are bringing, uh, you know, these, these, these boxes where people can, can hear 
hear the stories. They, they ex at, at least can hear Urdu and understand the Bible stories. But but yeah, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit was so powerful. You know, I didn't go to preach. I went to uh, personally pay, buy the freedom of an entire brickyard a year ago in August. And, uh, I just, I was, I felt like Jesus just so pissed off. I, I, I emptied, emptying the table, the, the temple, I, I emptied a brickyard and, and I didn't realize the reverberation that was going to send through the whole nation. You know, I wasn't a rich guy, I busted my butt and, and made first, second time in my life, I saved over $10,000 and I spent it all to, to free 13 families. There was, uh, 10 Christian and three Muslim families. I, I freed. Uh, but, um, there was something I wanted to get to, uh, oh, oh, so I didn't go over there. I, that's what I went there to do. But then I was asked to preach Des, The Holy spirit is real. Des, mir Sorry. miracles are real. Des, I laid my hands on a guy this last time and he was born deaf and mute and he was speaking for the, well, he wasn't speaking. He, he, he when, when, a de when, when someone uh, is, is, is miraculously healed of being deaf and dumb, they, they, they start making noises. They go, whoo, whoo, oh, oh. And, and I, I said, ha. And he went, ha, oh, ha. Oh. And I went, ha, la, ha, la. And so I wanted to make his first word be hallelujah. So, hallelujah. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't want it, it's, 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 I'm sorry, by the way, to hijack your... Uh, no, hey, Walter no, no, just no, went that's off, okay. Walter went off for about a good, good 30 minutes there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Bill, I can't have you on. You just you just told me everything you did. I actually told you a fraction. <laughs> no, I, I always want, you know, one of these days I'm going to do like a live stream. If you if you don't mind, I'm just going to interview you, talk as much as you want about this uh, your adventures over there in Pakistan. True now to God right there, you know. <laughs> But, you know, so this is what I wanted to tell you. So I come back here. I get into an, uh, uh, an argument with some intellectuals on a Facebook page, uh, and they, they, they get excited about evolution. Okay, they get excited about Neil deGrasse and, and Carl Sagan and the gurus of evolution. And, and, and so I, I see these really cool pictures of galaxies and, and and, and the galaxies in a cell. And the, and I think about how great our God, right? So sometimes on these pages, I just have to comment, what a creator, right? And and if I say that, then all of a sudden I'm pounced on. <laughs> you, you should know better. You're, it's like <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was in this argument with this one intellectual, and I I was banned from the page for 30 days, but, but then I they let me back on and so i was i was more tactful with the way i argued uh i think you know i just it's not like a cuss or anything like that i just i just thought well i'll i'll, I'll ease up i do like uh if that this could be a little bit of a witnessing platform not um because you know <laughs> people have got to be starving right for salvation so these are all people who are just they're Americans. I mean, they got everything. And I started arguing with this guy and he started arguing with me. And I, I said, wouldn't you like to know that there's a, a hereafter? Wouldn't you like to know that, that you were created for eternity? He said, no, I have everything I need right here. Got a wife, got kids, got a nice car, got a nice house. What more do I need? That 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 argument is is dead in the brickyard clay because i when i came back i answered him <laughs> i answered him when i came back i found his comment 30 days later and i said you know i've been to pakistan a third time you know these people don't have what you have and they'll never have what you have their lives aren't they're used up here they exist they love their wives and they love their children who are born in the brickyards but they they don't have any of the things you're, you're talking about they don't enjoy any of the things they've done they've been eating roti and potatoes their entire life with a few old vegetables 
bad water, breaking cold, poison air. They said they uh, their hope is in it. They actually, they actually are going to have they, they they will have their eternity, and it will be better than here. So you know what I'm saying. So his no, argument, like, what what more do I need? I, I don't know how to put it in words. What I'm trying to put in words, but you know what I'm saying. Right, we're spoiled. <laughs> well, we're we're, we're, we're spoiled it, with material riches. It's not that yeah. it, it kills the concept that right. we are giving. We are given. You know, we this is all we were given. It's not even given. You know, they and they can't they can't use words like that they use, you know, design. They can't, they, they're not allowed to use those words, but they'll use it. Right. Yeah. Because uh, you're either you're either we were all a big accident or we were really made in the image of the living God. And we really are a fallen world. And there really is a prince of darkness who really hates us because we were created in his image. And, and and because he's risen from the dead and because he just gave a mandate and he left the earth and he handed us the weapons of warfare, we get to we get to take the sword out of the sheath. My night, my my night brothers, and we <laughs> take the sword in our hand, put on the helmet of salvation, shield of faith, shot our feet in the preparation of the gospel of peace, you know, and uh, go to war. Yeah. So, Amen. Time to go and get yeah, on. We wield that that sword of the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. our sword is the gospel message. Right, right. Yeah. What well, bottom line? Bottom line. You know. You know. We, we won't win in talking politics or trying to argue politics. Right. Uh, if they come against the word, they're they're not coming against us. So yeah, we have it. We have it fairly easy over here, don't we, Wendell? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the we haven't even barely. We can feel, we can feel, and we can smell uh, the persecution on the horizon. But but it's just it's like a haze, you know. It's, it's just like drifting past us, like the angst. The angst is in the air. But this is, you know, we have not reached the point where our houses are being. Uh, assaulted and our daughters are being assaulted and we're being assaulted even though we're not slaves in a brickyard we might be free Christians in Pakistan but if, if occupiers, they're called occupiers they want us out of the community they'll, they'll make life hell for us so right now we're fighting that thank God we've got Muslim high powered Muslim lawyers on our side we would love to have, we'd love to hire the Christian lawyers, but they're fearful for taking cases that we're taking now. So I've been made, I've been made, um, uh, let me see if I can get this word out of my mouth. International, international affair, coordinator of the international affairs of the human liberation commission of Pakistan. So freedom cry does, and I'll, I'll just throw that out for your listeners. Hey, what's, what the, was that one more time? The page, the Facebook page is Freedom Cry. And thank God that, that he's allowed me to use that as, as a powerful tool. We've got hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Pakistanis and thousands and thousands that have shared our posts. Freedom Cry. Um, I give the gospel on that. And I, 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 I have video of all kinds of uh, enslaved people on that making bricks. Freedom Cry. And, and so uh, Aslam Pervez Sahotra, a great humanitarian and the president of the Human Liberation Commission of Pakistan, um, one of the humanitarian groups that has earned their right and their authority under God through the fire. He's been had assassination attempts. He's been our own government went there and gave a, a dinner for him. And his own government threw him in jail soon after that for five, for five years. And I, wow. I traveled with him. I'm becoming a very good friend of his. This man, when we enter a church, he falls on his face, sprawled out on his face on the carpet. And everyone in Pakistan takes off their shoes, by the way, when they enter the house of God. 
and I, it took me a while to get used to that. And they said, brother, take off your shoes, take off your shoes. You know, it's just, it's just a, a high, and, and God forbid if I put my, lay my Bible down on the ground. So they, there, there's, there's certain things they do that are just very, very careful, very thoughtful, very honoring. They're an honoring people, a respectful people. It's just that the, 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 the devils of religion, the, especially uh, now that we dropped our guns in Pakistan and fled, uh, the, 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 the Pakistan branch of Taliban is emboldened. And persecu- persecution of pa- in Pakistan is ramped up 100%. It wasn't that bad. It, it's increasing. And it, it, it increased the day we we hightailed it out out of Afghanistan. No. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> I'm pretty sure that emboldened them quite a bit after but brothers, that's emboldened uh Islamic uh, extremists throughout all all kinds of nations through nation yeah. Africa is ramped it up. They you know, they saw a little band of Taliban beat the greatest military on the earth. As far as they're concerned, yeah, and ju- and just for people to see as well, I just want to show a couple of pictures from back in the day. Well, not really back in the day, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> when I got married, you know, Phil was there along with the other brothers, and uh, something else from back in the day as well. Beautiful. And so- there's Phil down the bottom right. You know, he was there. I, I forgot. You were telling us a story. I forgot what it was, but you're really into your story. <laughs> what, what? 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 What says what? Oh, uh, down the bottom right. You, I'm not sure you remember that, but that's when you were uh, telling us a story through the Word of God. What? I forgot what it, I forgot what story it was. It was so long ago. You know, I'm always telling stories. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I I can't. It's too little. I can't see it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I got it on Facebook. I'll just send it to you. But yeah, it's just uh, no. I just I just thank God for you and, well, and Walter and all the other brothers and sisters I've been. Um, uh, talking to and also one more thing as well uh Nancy, i think that's how i say her name but she's from kenya she's watching us from kenya so i just want to thank god for her and hey, you know hey. she's able to join in and hear that praise god does he gets an, an international thing going you know um thank god for youtube <laughs> my brother is it walter or rob walter. robertson yeah walter robertson walter, walter. So you're talking about, you know, going and hanging out at Starbucks early on and, and witnessing. And, you know, we can be timidly afraid here. Isn't there a spirit of fear over us wanting to, to you know, open our mouths and witness these days? And yet that you're able to not not fall into that because there's such a wokeness of uh, uh, this, 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 this this angst against Christians and it's nothing but the spirit of antichrist. We need to remember that it's not people who want to shut up. It's the spirit of antichrist. It, it's sick. that water. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, am I late or Dakota. am I early? Early or late? Which uh, you're, am I? You're super late. <laughs> big time, big time late. Well, hold, hold on, because Walter or, 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 or Phil, he was just uh, saying something. I want him to go ahead and finish up real yeah, quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I'll finish up. So, so in Pakistan, uh, when, 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 so they had to dress me up to preach, right? Because I, I, I just came with brickyard clothes. And uh, we've had many crusades, little ones, big ones. But the last, the last one... Muslims were starting to come to our crusades, guys. And uh, I, I led 10 of them to Jesus Christ. I mean, I was just blown away. It was like they were waiting in a corner of, of the courtyard, and someone came and said, you know, there's 10 Muslims here. They they want to know more about Jesus. Isn't that, isn't that strange how, how the Lord will bring them to you also? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's the strange thing. It's... Yeah. You know, look at, you know, you know, I come, I'm a very reformed guy. Okay. So you know where I'm coming from. I already shared that in my testimony about a Cal- being a Calvinist and all that stuff. But man, it is uncanny that I don't have to look for people to go ahead and share my faith. They come to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if you're faithful, 
Yeah. Okay. And sharing the gospel message, it just seems like there's more and more people that the Lord will bring your way to share the gospel message. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's uncanny what happens, you know? Um, it's like it's like the angels are activated they're like look look he's ready he's ready let you know oh hey 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 father let's draw them let's draw them to this guy you know he's yeah like, absolutely you see that and when you said those 10 pakistani or those muslims you know that came to you yeah i mean they were just ready for the harvest oh my oh my threshing and and you know it, it's costly for a, pa a Muslim in Pakistan to come to Jesus. They, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of what's called silent Christians. The, I got to tell you guys this too. So I asked one of my interpreters. I said, "Okay, I, I can't wrap my head around this. It's illegal to change your faith. You, I mean, you can force a Christian uh, girl to, 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 to Islam, and, and the, the police won't won't do anything about it." Unless we fight it and, and, and try to rescue her, but 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 uh, if, if the one, one from the majority religion, Islam comes to Christ, they better not tell even their family. They'll either be dead, or they'll have to flee, um, or they'll have to go into hiding. So, so there's m m tens of the hundreds of thousands of quiet Christians. Now you could say, well, Jesus said. Uh, if we, unless we confess him before men, he won't confess before the Father in heaven. But understand, they're dead on a, on arrival. <laughs> they yeah. Christ it, but so, so. But I asked my uh, one of my interpreters. So it's illegal. Highly, I mean, it's highly illegal for them to convert from Islam to Christianity. Well, then why do they allow them to come to our crusades? Why do they allow them to openly just come to our crusades? And he chuckled and he said, well, they know the authorities know that miracles happen there. Hmm. I was like, wow. And I came home and I started wrapping my head around this beautiful thing. Let's see if I can say this without crying. Remember two or three times when Jesus healed and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were on top of him about it. Because it was maybe the Sabbath. Remember what he said? Which is easier to say? Be healed or your sins are forgiven. Huh? Which is easier to say? Be healed or your sins are forgiven. Are you asking us? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that... I believe it's your sins are forgiven. Anybody can say your sins are forgiven. Well, well what I'm say saying, rise, get up, and walk. That's a different thing altogether. No, no, no. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is Jesus said it in the same breath. I'm asking you, do you remember Jesus saying? Yes. Two or, two or three times when he healed somebody, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were were condemning him because it, because who was he to have that authority or condemning him because he did it on the Sabbath. And Jesus uh, turned to them and said, which is easier to say, be healed or your sins are forgiven. So what I'm saying is this is a no brainer. If a Muslim, they, they, they may think, well, they, they don't know that when they're healed, it's a no brainer that, yeah. that, that Jesus came to them. Jesus healed them. They're standing there being forgiven at the same time, man, because they're, they're giving their right. So in other words, they cannot deny it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> miracles happened over there. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? That's the thing, too. Well, like, well, yeah. His miracles really are part of the package. We just over here in our denominational uh, boxes only accept certain things. But But the whole package when he rose from the dead was it was was a miraculous supernatural deliverance package healing is the children's bread jesus said and it really is the children's bread in pakistan because they don't have the options we have they just have either life or death yeah i you know i for one you know i think that the greatest 
evidence, and I share this with Jewish people and with the Muslim people that I speak with, the greatest evidence of the miracles, I believe, that took place during the time of Christ was when Israel got rent in half. Those who believed Christ as being the Messiah, or Jesus as being the Messiah, and those who did not believe. It really wasn't a miracle. That was just a, 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 a separation of the goats on the left and the sheep on the right. I, I Well, no, but, but the thing is this, what I share with them, the Muslims and the Jewish people, is that if I were to get two Orthodox Jews, I mean, a ten, I mean, 100 Orthodox Jews, and talk to them right now, Orthodox, I mean, highly Orthodox, and try to share Jesus with them, um, what are my chances of going ahead and sharing the gospel message with them right. where they go ahead and they accept that? Yeah. It's, it's, it, uh, it's almost nil, right? It's, right? And so what you have going on there is, is you have the economy of Israel fully established. They had the temple ceremonies. They had the sacrificial system. They had the priesthood in order. Everything was right there. They're waiting for the Messiah to come. Yeah. Everything is in order. Right. And here comes onto the scene a man in the course of three and a half years. Man. Israel gets rent in half, Amen. separating the religious leaders and the people that followed them from those who followed Christ. And what did it was the very thing that you talked about, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven yeah. or rise, yeah. get up and walk. Well, anybody can say your sins are forgiven. Right. But when they saw the quadriplegia go ahead and rise, get up and walk. Right. That they could not deny. Wow. And that there. If you don't believe me for what I say, believe <laughs> me for my work's sake. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's what that's the greatest proof of the renting of Orthodox Israel. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really feel the spirit of the Lord in the conversation. You know, they did this stuff right in front of their eyes. Absolutely. So and if they denied that, <laughs> that was blasphemy. I mean, how could you deny the very miracles? Before their very eyes, right? Right. Right. Oh, and before, be, before, because I know y'all can go on. I, I know y'all. I know both of y'all pretty good now. But oh, yeah. <laughs> good. let me let me also uh, introduce. We got Joe up in here, and we also got Dakota. Uh, Joseph, you guys, where's your face, my man? Oh, he says he's not presentable right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> I, my my face got rather uh, dry, so I I'm got scabs all over my face. So. No problem, bro. <laughs> not exactly gonna put myself on camera. No worries, no worries. Yeah, like, and for those out, out there who thought, you know, if they had to come up here, they got to show their faces, they don't. You don't. <laughs> Look at me, I got pink glasses on, brother. I got pink right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, you're yeah, fine, you Walter. You're fine, Joseph. Yeah, you're fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's all right, bro. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. No, hey, I just want to welcome everybody to come up here. Like I said, we're going to do this uh, next Saturday as well, or sorry, this Saturday. And I'll just open it up just for anyone to talk, whatever's on their mind, your testimony. You want to talk about a doctrine, got a question about anything, Jehovah's Witness, if you want to talk, Muslim, whatever, come up here and talk. I mean, we, we've had quite a few people come up on here um, from different faiths, and we've talked to them. Uh, there's people from that, you know, Kale group that come in here, uh, people who actually came out of that group, and I thank God for that. Um, just seeing God just free people from all these different bondages, like, you know, you have the, you have the, the, the privilege of actually going to Pakistan and seeing that stuff for yourself, Phil. And, and for me, I mean, I've been able to see just, you know, uh, from at least from a virtual standpoint, just seeing people being free uh, from like different spiritual bondages, whether it be cults or uh, whatever it is, you know what I mean? And, you know, even with the, the testimonies about, you know, us being a pornography uh, previously, you know, I hope that reaches, you know, some of these young guys out here who's dealt with that, who may be struggling with it right now. Like, hey, you're not by yourself. And don't think, you know, just because someone calls himself a pastor, whatever it is, yeah. every man has had a struggle. Even Paul himself, he called himself the chief of sinners. He had struggles. Yeah. You know, he wasn't perfect. You know, the only one who was perfect was Jesus, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. It's hard to think of that the apostles like, oh, the apostles didn't do anything wrong. Look at Peter. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Oh. You know, I tell you, you know, that's one of the things, you know, it's our sin 
that drives us to our knees. Oh. But you have to oftentimes wonder, okay, initially it was our sin that drove us to our knees Man. and say, Lord, forgive me, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is this. You, you have to ask yourself the question, well, why doesn't the Lord just get rid of my sin altogether instantaneously and never, never have any more struggles with sins? Why huh. can't he just do that? Huh. And then you realize it's my sin that drives me to my knees. Uh -huh. You know, I'm telling you, guys, it's our sin. You have to realize yeah. My goodness, that we, if there's sins of commission, yeah. there's sins of omission, yeah. we fail in every aspect of yeah. our life. We are in a continual state of sin. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. We are driven to our knees because yeah. of that. And, and a broken and contrite heart, I will not despise. despise. That's yeah. exactly right. That's beautiful, yeah. brother. Beautiful, brother. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the thing, man. You know, that's something to walk into. I mean, uh, uh, it's a good and a healthy thing to see ourselves as sinners deserving of nothingness and being saved by amazing grace. Because because the, the more we walk in that brokenness, it, it, it's going to become more and more difficult to judge a brother, to judge another brother. You know, absolutely. And that's what goes back to the very original thing that we talked about that Desmond brought up about judging our brothers. Mm. Yeah. You know, when you're so aware of your own sin and your, your mm. capability of sinning, mm. oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, when I went through the struggle that I did, man, I don't point the finger at anybody. Uh -huh. I don't care if it's a, a Jimmy Swagger or <laughs> anybody. I just, man, I don't even go there. Yeah, I know. I know. You but, know what I'm saying? But, I don't go there. Uh, but for the grace of God. But you know? But that's it. That's me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, amen. Amen. No, oh, I, I, you mentioned Jimmy Swagger. When I first came to Christ, Walter, I uh, I just I just I just I just hung on every word back in the early eighties and, and his teaching just just filled my filled my pores. And but but the thing is I was also in the word on my on my own. And and so that's why it we have to, we have to stay stay hung on the word of God more than a man of God because if that man of God falls and we are hanging on him, man, we're gonna fall. But if we're hanging on the word itself, we'll understand that the man he just fell. You know, let's let's let's, 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 let's fall in love. Let's fall in love with Christ. Let's not leave our first love. Let's embrace Christ and Him crucified. Embrace the person that the word represents. Right. That's what well, think, he, he's you know? the word made he's the word made flesh. That's right. Just embrace him. Yeah. Embrace Amen. him. Yeah. Absolutely. Who's this other brother that was on there? I saw him in the distance. Yeah. Uh you know, uh, uh, Dakota. Where are you at, yeah. Dakota? Come on. Oh, yeah, where yeah, where did he go anyway? <laughs> Let me yeah. uh look like he was it looked like he was disconnected. He probably did. It hey, like Joseph, you got anything to share? I saw uh, the, the topic of sin is one of the reasons why I didn't actually come on last week when that was the topic, because I'll get on the forgiveness and sin, and other people will say, well, you can't sin once you come to Christ. You are now a new creature. And that can step into Pelagianism, which denies the original sin. Therefore, you no longer sin. You, you know, even if you lied or cheated or stole or raped or whatever or had an adultery or whatever they will still they will see well that's not that's not a sin because i'm a new creature so that it's a topic that you know i might actually become rather overzealous about and mm. rather bible thumping about because you know so i i have to i have to agree with you guys that uh, the more we sin the more we we see the need for our savior the savior mm -hmm. the only savior not this Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Well, there are many saviors. No, there's only <laughs> one in his name. And it was Paul or Peter said that oh, uh, under no other name is, it can, are we to come to salvation, but by the name of Jesus Christ. It's like, so what did he save you from? Yourself. 
Yeah, because you because you send you send yourself Amen. to the lake of fire. He doesn't send you there. He 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 opens the, he opens the grate underneath your feet in the end that you that you that be, that is de deserving of your pet your penalty. Mm -hmm. It is you that it, through because of your rejection of His Son Jesus mm -hmm. Christ that God Almighty will send you there. And if mm -hmm. anybody says, "Well, no, that's too harsh," you got to allow the Muslims and the Hindus and the Buddhists and and the voodoo's and the other. And, sorry, no, I don't. Jesus says, I am the door, I am the gate, and no, and anybody who enters another way is a thief and a robber. You know, he's making himself, uh, he's revealing himself to Muslims and many Muslim nations and dreams yeah. and visions. Jesus himself is coming into these places where the gospel is blocked mm -hmm. in, in multitude ways. Yep. He, he, but they're no longer Muslim at that point. So Right. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus did say he can raise up a rock. And the rock will speak the gospel if he has to, you know. Absolutely. Uh, never never <laughs> doubt the power of God at all. And also, I, I just want to mention this too. Uh, Namsi from uh, uh, Kenya, uh, we do have some sisters inside the group as well that, um, you know what, I'll add you into our uh, group chat. And then we'll get you involved with some of the sisters and maybe they can help you out as well. You can just talk to all of us in that group chat. We'll definitely be happy to assist. Also, Dakota's back. Dakota, yeah, back to go. I was I was uh, watching Kelly's channel. He okay. was talking about one safe, always safe, salvation, yes. my type of topic. Oh, that that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going. Are we we'll, supposed we'll, to talk about that pretty soon? Yeah, we'll we'll get, see. I I don't try to. It seems like every time we go for a topic, everybody else is doing the same thing. So I yeah. try to, <laughs> I try to do something else. You know. No, but what, make, wasn't there something scheduled though for? Uh, uh, Lord, Saturday? Lord, uh, Lordship Salvation, I think. Um, I gotta check the schedule again. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it was Lordship Salvation. Yeah, on and, October the second. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. Let me see. I, I put the schedule. Up. Let me just double check that really quick. No, okay, so. The 25th, what's on the 20th? Uh, well, let's say the 29th. The 29th is on works, and then on the 2nd, yeah, it's Lordship Salvation. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, and then after that, we'll be talking about uh, the rapture. Uh, we're talking about abortion. We're, you guys gave me a whole bunch of ideas. So, like I said, I'm always open to talk about whatever. And yeah, we'll get into it. I know Nicole; she was uh, specifically talking about uh, the gifts of the uh, the gifts of the spirit, and also talking about the Kundalini spirit as well. And uh, she comes from, I believe, a charismatic background. She had to correct me if I'm wrong on that. So she uh, she can actually explain it a little better than I can. But uh, yeah, we got a, quite a good lineup right now. Uh, I thank God for the brothers and sisters I've been meeting. I mean, this this yeah. here in and of itself has been really good. Yeah. Hey, Des. Um, are later on are we going to talk about like the abortion and stuff like that? Yeah, I got that scheduled as well. That is on the ninth. Okay. Let's I tell you what, this has been a really uh, rich uh, time, Des and uh, Walter and my other brothers. I, uh, I just uh, there's something about, and and, and you're going to invite sisters on too, and that's good. There's something about brothers who dwell in unity, right? We can sense the Holy Spirit here among us, even though we're not in the same room. Uh, I know I do. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, and, and and the things that Walter was talking about. Uh, just, just it, it frees us up. Now, it doesn't free us up to just be wanton whoremongers and drunkards and <laughs> thieves and sinners, but we, we, we don't have to fear hell's fire if we mess up or if we, uh, our attitudes suck one day or, uh, you know, repent, repentance hurts good. And, and and the other thing I was thinking was this, was Jesus hit, it says in Hebrews, he, I mean, we're talking about the creator of the galaxies who decided to become a man like us. He learned discipline by the things he suffered. Yeah. And he, and, and, and he just chose to be buffeted. He was tempted in all things as we are, but somebody had to take the curse Someone had to be the pure Lamb of God. But isn't it isn't it wonderful, Wendell, that we now have a high priest who can now sympathize, sympathize. with us? Yes. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> that just boggles my yeah. mind that my God could sympathize with me, all, being that he was tempted yeah. in all ways as we are, and yet without yeah. sin. Yeah. And he calls I mean, my goodness, he and knows he, our framework because yeah. he became humanity. Right. And he calls you know, uh, it brothers. took on humanity. Yeah. And we're his brothers. Jesus is our brother. We yeah. got a big, big, we got a big brother. We got a powerful father. And, uh, you know, this is something else too. Uh, what I'm realizing uh, back, back with the evils that I saw are so real in Pakistan and the persecution that's so real there. Uh, we can't take down evil men. We have no power against evil governments, but we do have, I say this with great humility and reverence to the one who has given us this authority. We have no power against evil men. We have no power against evil governments. We do have power and authority against the spiritual forces of darkness over evil men. And we do have power and authority over the spiritual forces of wickedness over evil governments. Check. Yeah, as long as we stand on Christ, yeah, that power is always there. I mean, if you have the Holy Spirit, that power is there. You, you know, we look at what uh, Jesus did. We look at what the apostles did. They did that all by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have that same Holy Spirit within us. You know, so uh, like, I, I remember some. this is this may seem small, but I remember my mom was suffering with a bad migraine. And my little brother, you know, he just put his hand over my uh, mom's head. Uh, the migraine was completely gone that same moment. Uh, you know, so we, you know, that power uh -huh. of the Holy Spirit is definitely there. And of course, it's, it is all done by his, by his unction. So there's nothing yeah. that we can do of our own. We can't say like, oh, let this happen. But it's about God saying, let, like, like in the beginning, let there be light. And there was light, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes, and most times he'll use us in order to do that here. You know, in this case, healing or, you know, wherever it may be, whatever gift of the spirit there is, you know, God, by his will, allow us to do that. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. That's, a good, that's a good point. Because uh, many years I've uh, had to deal with atheists and other skeptics who might not be atheists, say like a, an agnostic who's actually a lot like an atheist. But anyways, their common trope would be to, uh, to well, uh, any Christian that believes in miracles that would say, okay, so if you can heal the heal the sick and the leper and the and the and the and and this and that, why don't I'm, uh, I've got a hospital near me? I want you to go to that hospital. And, and, and speak to that cancer and let it make it go. Speak to those AIDS, make it go, and 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 and, and grab and grab onto that person's arm or their missing arm and make it grow back. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Mm. It's in His will, and I pray mm. about it. And if it is not for that will and that time, mm. that bit, and then because the, the person that you pray over, mm. God has to see it in their heart that they're willing to accept right. Him. Even before they even you even approach them, before you even approach them, God sees their heart, and if they're not truly, genuinely, you know, in His in His book of life, seeing this person saying they're going to receive me through through the work of my son or my daughter in the and as a chaplain or or mm -hmm. as a volunteer or as a walk in, if they're not going to receive it, then it'll and and nobody else is going to re, is going to receive me through seeing this done in this atheist. Because by the way, some people are healed and remain atheist or or or, or anti-Christian, but somebody else comes to Christ because what's done in them. Mm. But if nobody is to, is seen by His glory, nothing is done by His glory. Nothing has come about by His glory, then it mm. will not be done. So we cannot recklessly go into that haunted building and say, <laughs> "Yeah, exercise these demons, be gone." And nobody. No. Nobody was asking for it. Nobody cared. It's like right. you did nothing. Right. And Paul said, "I become a clanging gong. I, I am nothing." Right. And well, but, he, but, was talking, but, he was talking about, "I am if I have not love." True. But if by if but love, Jesus, I could say, "Well, Jesus is love." But of the same mindset as Paul was saying that if I have not love, I am a clanging gong. If you go into that hospital and someone is coughing their lungs out from tuberculosis or whatever else, yeah. and you lay your hands on them and they still don't believe, then God sees that. Right. You know, uh, and, and one thing you said, it, it's dangerous to go after spiritual forces of darkness that we're we are not that we're going out of our realm we will be chewed up and spit out. But but in our walk a day world, the things that are in front of us, 
the challenges in front of us, we get to we get to ask or deliver how we do this, how we how we win this battle. And again, most of the battle is our mind. And we, 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 we win that one over once in a while, and then we can move on and, and, and win a couple other battles besides that. But that's a good point, uh, brother, about walking into, into the hospital. That is such a good point. Because I have to say my own mom would so many times has challenged me. Like, Philip, if Jesus heals like you say, then how come you just don't walk into the hospital and and heal everybody? And, you know, I, and I, it used to bother me because I was like, yeah, Philip, how come I don't? But you just you just hit hit the nail on the head, it, you know the nail that went through his hand. It, it, it there has to be a, a belief and a desire. It's like when lightning strikes, lightning light. There's positive charges that 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 march through the heavens, and it only is that negative charge that reaches up past the tree and grabs a hold of that positive charge. It, it, that we're, we're, uh, there will actually be a, a full stream of lightning. There has to be a, a char, another charge reaching up to, to, to grab the charge. It comes because I deal with lightning struck trees all the time. I've been an arborist for 45 years. I've hey, I'm an arborist. Are you? Yeah, I run a tree company. So do I. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I'm an arborist. Where, yeah. where at? In California. Brother, yeah. Amongst I... the redwoods. Oh my! Whoa! Wow! Whoo! You know, I thought I I climbed some big elms and oaks and cottonwoods here until I went up into your country, and I come back here, and my trees are little compared. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah I, they're, I, I, they're, I, they're big I, trees I, over here. Praise God, man! I've been an arborist. Well, I came on when we were called tree surgeons back in the late seventies. Yeah, my father owned a tree surgeon association, a company called Tree Surgeon Association. Tree surgeon. Well, how how old are you, Wendell? Sixty-five. I'm sixty-four, so I'm almost. Oh, old. brothers, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. So you know, um, yeah. So I I've been around a while. So so you know but, about uh, yeah you know, yeah you know about the negative pot and have you done lightning installation in big trees? I it's my favorite thing to do because I don't. Oh, is that right? I, I we don't do that. I run a company. We take down trees. We 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 open up vistas towards you know Monterey Bay and the ocean and or the cities. Wow. We do a lot of fire abatement. Wow. I do a lot of work for the Santa Clara County Fire Safe Council all over here uh-huh. in, in the area and stuff like that. But I'm getting my son into it, which is such a blessing, wow. and he's doing really good. He just joined me about a couple of months ago, and That's great, you know, it's so wonderful to be working with my son. That's and teaching him, you know, how to run the business and take yeah. over the business. Uh, don't don't ask me to climb a tree. I'm not going to do it. Uh, what is it? Um, but uh, I run the company and I have guys that work for me. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing well, I've been doing I was in the dental field for 18 years and then I got into the tree business uh, and I've been doing this for 30 years now. But you never left the ground. You yourself never climbed a tree. No, I climbed bridges. I used to paint bridges. But you know what? You know the bridges that go over the Mississippi or the uh, what is it, the Missouri River and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, those types of bridges, I painted those things and petroleum oh. plants. I did my high time that way. No, and I, I, and that, that's awesome. But you're one of. The, every once in a while, I'll, I'll meet an owner of a tree company who's very successful, and he's never left the ground. Never ground. climbed a tree. Don't ask me to ch- start a chainsaw. <laughs> See, see now you're probably really successful in your business. I I'm a really good arborist, but uh, but I'm not a good businessman. And so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm an I'm an entrepreneur. I've run a couple of tech companies, also yeah. raised capital for some tech companies and uh-huh. stuff like that. So I've done my thing. Wow, that's yeah. cool. very cool. Well, neat. Uh, what what's the name of your tree company? Agricon. Huh? Agricon. Agricon. A-G-R-I hyphen C-O-N. Yeah, it does sound like a high-tech tree company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I used to have over 40 guys working for me. Oh, my threshing in the corn on my floor. Yeah, I, yeah, I got yeah, three so. now. I downsized to three. But yeah. I downsized since I've gotten older, and I love working my, with my handful of guys now. So well, when you you're know, young, I, you're foolish. <laughs> we got our name in a dream. Uh, Teresa woke up, and she's we were – 
okay, God, you pulled me out of seminary and throwing me back in the trees because I got a prophetic word that I was anointed to climb trees. He's, I've been through the, I've been through 30 years, well, 45 years in trees, 30 years in my own company. And, uh, we were like, I was like reluctantly going back into it at this time, 30 years ago. I said, okay, I'll be obedient, but you, you got to give us the name. So my wife got the name Living Tree. In a Beautiful. Day. And, and, and we found it in the Catholic Bible months later, because in the Protestant Bible, on his way to Calvary, Jesus tells the widows, weep for yourselves, daughters of Jerusalem, if they do this in the green tree, think what they'll do in the dry. In the Catholic version, he calls himself the living tree. Weep for yourselves, daughters of Jerusalem. If interesting. You do this in the living tree. And so, well, isn't that interesting? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Well, I would so tell you the, the thing about my son, but let's get off the tree thing. <laughs> and let's talk about the other well, subject. <laughs> well, well, before, sorry, before we go. Sorry, no, no, no. You, you sorry, got I'm here. sorry about that. By the way, Rob said he's about, what, 60? What do you say? He's 63. So we 63. got a couple of we got a few guys in, in their sixties right here. I see. We're sixty-five here. Uh, yeah, he's he's sixty-three, almost sixty-three, sixty-two actually. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we got we got some older fellows up in here. You guys are representing. Old <laughs> hey. guys. All all yeah. Tell you what. And we got Wycliffe from Kenya. Hey, what's going hey. on? How you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing okay, but all the, the way gone. from Kenya. Wow, very cool. That's awesome. Very cool. Hey, brother. How are you? Hey, welcome. I'm hey, doing okay. Glad to see you. Thank you. God bless you. I, I I know there's a little bit of lag there because, like you know, the the countries and everything being so far away. But how how are you doing over there? Uh, what's your story? <laughs> So far, I've first this opportunity to thank Almighty God uh, for the gift of life, for the grace, and for His faithfulness towards a uh, human being. And also, I also take this opportunity to thank you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm happy, I'm glad, and I'm proud to be with you here. Why? Because... Oh. I need more from you. When I joined the uh, live, I have learned many. I'm 23 years old. Jesus Christ is my personal savior. I have a ministry in Kenya called Prayer Church International Ministry. So uh, it's my privilege to join you here and to learn from you. I heard my brother say, Brother Walter, he's 64 years, 64 years, 65, 64, yeah. and another brother says 65. So I'm much glad, and I have my fathers here, and I, I, I will learn more from them in Jesus' mighty name. So I thank you so much, Brother Desmond, for adding me, allow me to be here. Mm. I'm much happy to join you and to humble and listen to learn from you people. Thank you so much, Brother Martin. God bless you. I thank everybody. So I know I'm welcome by the grace of God. Thank mm. you so much. I'm from well, I'm people. sure I'm sure that when you come on live here, that when you share things, we will have much to learn from you. You know, we here in the United States are very spoiled and we need to learn from other people in other parts of the country mm. or the world that do not have it as good as we do mm. here in the United States. Mm. And uh, I tell you, uh, I think that we have much to learn from you all mm. who are involved in, in missions in other countries yes. because uh, you, your, your faith uh, is where the rubber meets the road. Yes. You have to walk that faith. You have to live it on a daily basis. And you do not take your faith for granted. We here in America, we take our faith for granted. Yes. Brother, what, what are your challenges in Kenya? 
Amen. Amen. Uh, what I know. What are uh, what are your challenges? The challenges uh, uh, in Kenya. So far, I'm running a ministry, and uh, the main challenges we have in Kenya is the missions. Uh, the main challenge that affects the missions is that a uh, financial challenge. Uh, also, we also have spiritual challenge because spiritual challenge is is everywhere. Even Jesus Christ Himself uh, was uh, was was the certain trying to challenge Jesus. If you read the story, the apostle uh, like Paul, Peter, they had spiritual challenge, but that one didn't affect their way of living to Christ. So we have also spiritual challenges according to the Bible but, uh, that we live in the days of evils, the hour of evils. So that's uh, that's normal. But the main challenge that affects uh, the mission is all about the financial challenges that we have in Kenya and also in the ministry. Sure. Uh, because in my in my ministry, uh, we my ministry we start in the village where our headquarter is in a place called Oto. Now, uh, but I thank God. God has been faithful. We are building now a new church. is on the Linton. That's a glory, a glory, and a glory, and a glory to God. Mm. So, mm. another challenge we are facing in Kenya. Uh, I can't say I can't say it's the government because the Lord God is the one who gives us the government the role as the authority, those are in authorities. Uh, but the one the I can use this term that uh, you lose them? that's an He's cutting out. Yeah, that's another challenge. Like when, yeah, we lost you there. No, we internet issue. We just wait; he'll come back. This happens a lot in Pakistan. But just the fact that he was with us for a few we minutes. We are many people, and we went for an football pitch. We went to people who. Are playing in the field, but now the connection is getting worse. No, oh, yeah, it's just wait a little bit. Yeah, <clears throat> it's really nice to hear from him. Yes, that he's planting churches and yes, involved in that. Boy, I tell you, I yes, I, I feel ashamed. You know. When I I see individuals like that, and you know, I mean, uh, Nicole Smith sent a a, a video about um, this gentleman, and he's speaking about his experience in Nuhan Nuhan China or something like that, and uh, how what they did was you know they they asked him to pray for us that we may become like the americans and he goes like this no i'm <laughs> right. not going to do that no. i need to pray for the americans to be more like you right. and then what he did was he gave the examples i mean these people that are in underground churches in china right. and they were what is it about approximately 10 or 15 men that came in to meet him and they came up the elevator two by two because they didn't want to draw attention to him. Okay. And they had this secret meeting and they traveled over, what is it, 13 hours to go ahead and get there. Mm. Okay. And then she, one of the people wow. passed a Bible over yes. to another individual that didn't have it. And she recited the Bible. Mm. She had yeah. the Bible memorized. You know right. what I mean? Right. And she says, they can take away the Bible, but they can't take it out of my mind. Right. Out of yeah. my head. And I'm going, wow, are you kidding me? What a great video that Nicole sent. Yeah. If hey. you guys haven't seen that, it's, you know, check it out. 
What what's our brother's name in Kenya? What's his name again, Des? Wycliffe. Oh, yeah. Wycliffe. Wycliffe. Uh, Wycliffe. Hey, Wycliffe. Okay. We're ready to hear you again. Mm -hmm. I mean, hi. Yeah, so uh, I was talking about the challenges that uh, that affect us in Kenya. What I was trying to explain is all about the spiritual challenge where many people became Christian and they don't need to be like Christ. They reject to be like Christ. They take sins as normal. And uh, this is where we need to preach the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ at this hour to save many souls to the kingdom of God. Because uh, the Bible says that pretendant is that worse than uh, those who now are doing it. Mm. So what I'm trying, I was trying to say that it's like uh, in a, foot a football pitch, uh, we have thousands of people uh, who are spectators, but only 22 are playing. Meaning uh, in Kenya, the truth is that uh, many are not filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is, we will judge according to how, how the according to how their behavior, the behavior of people, the fruits that we bear will judge us. So that's another challenge that affecting many people in Kenya. We, don't, we just want to pretend as Christian. We want, just want to pretend as Christian. But when we preach the truth of Jesus Christ, and I believe and I have faith, that truth will change many people to be like Christ. So mm. that's why I, I told you first, Mm. You are like my fathers, and mm. I need to learn from you oh. the glory of God. And uh, I'm really humble before God. Yeah. Oh, brother. Thank you. For you, we're humble before you. Yes. Oh, my God. I, I thank God for yeah. you, even for you to come on here. I, I thank God yeah. for you even, you know, allowing you to have the internet and even to, you know, talk to us right here. Because I know right now the connection is kind of hard, but yet God is allowing you to talk to us. So I thank God just for allowing it to happen. Um, well, uh, guys, we are running at two hours and almost 30 minutes, right? So, <laughs> this, is, this is David for next time. Th this is actually beyond the time. Yeah, I used to do an hour and 30 yeah it's, it's no problem with Cliff, don't worry about it. Um, we're gonna do this uh Saturday as well. I'll probably go and do it for another two hours for, for these type of sessions. I'll do like two hours and maybe like 30 minutes. So, we got I'll go about another 15 minutes, hey, but David. I. I why don't you why don't you pray us out and pray especially over Wycliffe? Yeah, you know what? Since we got 15 minutes, let's all pray. Oh. Let's, let's, let's all go around the table and uh, go ahead and pray. And uh, if anyone got prayer requests, <laughs> just go and put them in the uh, comment section. We definitely will. Uh, Wycliffe, if you got anything you want to pray for, I'll give you the first dips. Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like you to pray for... Uh, on third next month, I have fundraising for the roof of the church. That is the uh, first thing I need you to pray for me uh, and uh, for God to touch the heart of those who invited to raise money for the fire, for the roof uh, next month on third. And uh, I like your prayers. I like all of you to pray for me on that. And the second thing, uh, I was very sick. It's now almost uh, one week. Uh, I can say that today I am better, but I've been on the bed, lying Amen. on the bed. Um, mm. I couldn't hear uh, that. He, he was sick for about one week, and now he's feeling better. It's okay. from last week or Friday. Mm. You to pray for me for the complete healing of my father in heaven. Because the Bible says prayers as thank um, you, Lord. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I think we got I got most ways. So we're we're gonna pray for his family and also for him. I know they're battling sickness. And uh also just pray for the situation that God just break the hearts over there to have more people follow after him. That's a, that's the a gist of what I got from him. Okay. I could be right on that. Yeah. Uh, so what, uh, any prayer requests from everyone else? Mm. Let's just go for it. I got you. 
I'll go ahead and start us off. And uh, Joseph, since you're the last one down there, you'll be the last one to close us mm. out, all right? <laughs> Amen. So that's only our only the prayer items request. I the connection. That's that's the only thing. You know, um, I already prayed for one another's request. Rather than praying for my own request, we have a mountain to move in Pakistan. We have this mountain of generational slavery. So I, I love you, brother, to agree with me in that the the the, the fields are right right for the harvest, mm. um, and uh, the laborers we know are few. So, Father, we just ask you. We we're told to 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 pray that you, the Lord of the harvest, send laborers, and we we pray according to what you told us to pray. That's all we can do. Amen. Mm. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we come before you today, Lord, as brothers and sisters of Christ. Lord, I just want to thank you for uh, your goodness, Lord, your mercy. I just want to thank you for your son. I thank you for what your son has done on the cross for us, Lord, mm -hmm. uh, reconciling us to yourself. I want to thank you just for your love and kindness and mercy. When we were enemies of you, you still loved us and forgave us of our sins, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for just freeing us from our sins, our bondages, Lord, that we've had mm -hmm. and bring us nearer to you, Lord. Um, Lord, I just want to pray first for Whitcliffe here, Lord, and his family over there in Kenya. I pray for him as well. That The sickness that they're battling, Lord, I just pray that you put a hand of healing over their whole family. Lord, I just pray for, if it's within your will, Lord, I just pray just use us also to bring them closer to you, Lord. Uh, Lord, just pray for the people that he's witnessing to, Lord, the ministry he's uh, a part of. I just pray that you use him to bring more souls to your cause, Lord, bring more souls unto Christ. And I pray you use those same souls to reach more people, Lord, so that we can all meet each other in heaven. Uh, Lord, please thank you again just for all the brothers and sisters you brought here, Lord. Just want to thank you for the guys I've met in the past, the people I will meet in the future, those who are blessed by you, those who are saved by your blood. I thank you for all of them, Lord. And, Lord, uh, it just shows how much of a good guard you really are, Lord. And I just want to thank you just for your kindness, Lord. Mm. Uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for the church that I'm part of as well. I thank you for uh, Jim, uh, Jim Deacons. As you know, he's with you now, Lord. I thank you for the old man. I thank you for the wisdom he shared with all of us there in church, Lord. I thank you for everything, all the love he shared, his, his kindness, Lord, his jokes, his, his you know the wisdom he shared from the word of God. I thank you for, thank you for him. I thank you for the time we've had with him before he passed. And I, Lord, I just pray for his family as well. I just pray that you cover them, Lord. With, and I just pray just bring a peace and loving to, and towards them, Lord. I let them know that you're always there every step of the way. I pray for his wife, Patty. You know, she lost her husband after like, I think, what, 50 plus years, whatnot. I know it's difficult for Lord, but I just pray just continue to comfort her, Lord. Let her know that her husband is now safe with you, that he's no longer feeling pain, no sorrow, no nothing. And Lord, I just pray that uh, you just continue to just fill that whole family with just your love, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for the next show that we do, Lord. I just pray that this reaches even more people for your glory. I just pray that more people are able to hear the gospel, Lord. I just pray that people are made free from their sins, Lord. I pray they're free from the cults, whatever it is that's holding them back, something that Satan's using or they're holding them back from you, Lord. I just pray just break all of that, Lord, and bring them closer to you, Lord. Mm. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Father in heaven, Lord, uh, we know that you are a great God that causes all things to work together for good. Mm. We would ask that you would stir up in the hearts of those people in Kenya and also in Pakistan mm. to draw the harvest to those who can preach the word of God. Mm. to bring forth those people, mm. to bring forth those people to come alongside of Wycliffe, mm. to work with him mm -hmm. so that he's not just a one-man show. Mm. Inspire the people. Cause them to see who you are mm -hmm. and lift their lives up. Yes, Lord. And build that church to open up the avenues of finance to go ahead and of that church and to establish another bastion for the faith. Mm. Lord, we would ask that uh, 
also. You would put a hedge around those who you have given the courage to go to other countries to share. Mm. Oh, with Wendell mm. and our missionaries, Lord. Amen. To be with them. Mm. To come along, never leave them, Lord. Mm. But to put a hedge around them and protect them because they go into a dangerous land. Amen. These missionaries mm. are you have given such boldness to and such uh what is it uh they're, they're so brave and you know I, mm. I i stand in awe at what they do mm. we live in this country and, mm. and we as you know americans live in this country and we take so many things for granted i forget but lord there's a war that wages on over here too yes and we see on the horizon that great and evil things are going to happen to this country unless we rise up. Mm -hmm. But may we wield the sword of the gospel that is able to change people, not the political sword, right? but the message of the gospel, yes, which God. is able to yes. change the hearts of men. May they yes. come to realize who you are. God our Savior, our God, yes, God, the one who has died on our behalf. And uh -huh. Lord, we would ask that you would be with mm. the young men, the young men that struggle with their sin, Lord. Mm. And I hope and pray that they do not give any opening in their armor mm. that the enemy could go ahead and pierce through mm. lord put a hedge around them a stronghold around them and protect them but also give them a mind mm. that they are also not prone to maybe opening up that armor to you know uh exposing themselves may they be watchful mm. may they be watchful for Satan is just around the corner seeking to sift them as wheat. Mm. Lord, I would just ask that you would utilize some of the old guys here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the experiences that we've gone through, mm -hmm. that we could go ahead and at least convey our experiences and our struggles so that the younger men would not fall into the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Lord, you know, be with the women, godly women, to protect themselves, to protect them, and to keep them holy and pure, Lord, mm -hmm. before you. Lord, we would just ask that you would also bless this ministry. Yes, Lord. Bless the men and the women who are a part of this ministry. Be with Desmond also, as he, yes. you know, from time to time has gone through struggles and issues within his life and the turmoil that life just brings our way. I mean, there's many bumps along this road, and we mm. would ask that you would just get us through those things. Thank you, Lord. And always be mindful of your presence and always keep our eyes focused upon you, Lord. Yes, Lord. What a great God we have, a God and Savior who is Amen. our high priest, who now sympathizes with us because He, you have become as one of us. Yes, Lord. And you know who we are yes, in the most intimate sense. Yes, Lord. And I praise you that I could go ahead and approach you because you understand my frailties, my weaknesses, my failures. And that God I can approach. Yes, God. Lord, cast your love upon us. Yes. Never let us go. Yes, God. Be with us always, Lord. Yes, God. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
Oh, I, I guess we lost Dakota again. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Lord God, I, I would like to raise a prayer to those who are struggling in sin and have a stronghold in any yes, sin that they have constantly battled that day in, day out, or may not be day in, day out, but something they thought they would never do again. And years later, they, you know, they slip up. But Lord God, these are strongholds. And especially if it's, if it's an addiction. And Lord God, your gospel started in Genesis 3.15 when you said to the woman and the serpent, who we know is the dragon of old in, Satan, in, Genesis, uh, in Revelation, who will be revealed as Satan. But uh, your, your gospel began in the garden, Lord God, when you said and you promised to Eve that, uh, that the serpent would, be, ha would have, a, have a bruise on his head by your son Jesus Christ and that uh, he would in, in the serpent would only give you a minor bruise in your heel Lord God and this is this is your gospel and Jesus said, he said it again the, uh, the night before he he was towed away that the son of man must be given over to to uh, to the Pharisees and be be uh, put to death and rise up the third day and this and this, this is what actually happened you are the rock, Lord God, and in Jesus Christ, that we know we have a, a mediator between man and, and, and God, that anything that we, that we struggle with, that we are to give it over to you and not just not mm. just take every thought pr prisoner, but to to come to you in anything. We are, as Paul said, where we are to never cease in prayer, and this does not mean mm. to cease to pray with your mouth forever forever and ever but simply to anything that you have whether it be of glory and in joy or whether it be in sorrow or in tri or in tribulation they just give it all to you lord god amen and mm. these and these in kenya and and the and mm -hmm. south Amer south africa and south america and all these other countries who are in drought and their and their, their governments are coming down upon them with whether it be religion or not lord god that you be a beacon unto unto them even stronger in these in these days, and especially in Afghanistan, which we're seeing more and more almost every day of being people being shot down, regardless of the of these uh, <laughs> these uh, say sanctuaries being put up by the American troops. Mm. Lord God, that uh, places in 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 uh, India and Pakistan that were their persecution is getting stronger. And, uh, and not to mention Indonesia and China, and as we mentioned earlier, Lord God, we that we just we just pray that the people come to you and look up to you, not just physically but in spirit, and uh, that we know that in Revelation that the work that had begun that had begun and not finished that would be finished by your angels, Lord God, that mm -hmm. just. Give the give, give your people their inspiration, Lord God. Oh God, to give the to give a light to those who say that you you cannot sin, and giving nothing but despair to those who fail daily in their sin and their in their misery and their and their and struggle with regarding you and their faith and not recognize you, Lord God. But they know that you are the Savior, that you give them a new a new refreshing in their spirit, Lord God. You mm -hmm. rejuvenate them. Yes, Lord. And uh, in your name, Jesus Christ, be glory and honor. Amen. 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 And we look like we lost uh, Whitcliffe again, but it was kind of hard with his uh, connection, unfortunately. But no, I appreciate every brother who came on, every sister that's out there. Um, like I said, we're going to do this uh, uh, this Saturday at 830. And yeah, hold on one second. He's back again. There he is. Mm -hmm. And Wycliffe, Amen. I want to thank you for coming up, man. I want to thank you for coming up, brother. Hey, Amen. I'm there. Thank you. So uh, before, I, I would like to pray with you in the name yeah, of go. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our Heavenly Father, we say thank you this morning in Kenya, this night in the United States of our God. We bless your name for your faithfulness. Thank you for allowing us and connecting us through your Holy Spirit, Father. I say thank you for every soul that joined this broadcasting, God. 
Lord, I call upon your judgment. I call upon the Calvary to cover each of us, to give us wisdom and to live in the right way. Mm. I say thank you so much again, Almighty Father, for the Holy Spirit that you mm. promised us in the book of Acts chapter 1. Mm. And you sent it to us to live and to guide us, to conduct us according and it it was fulfilled in the book of Acts chapter 2, my father. We say thank you also for the, your son who came and died for us for the sake of our sin, to renew our soul and our mind, to make us to be your children, to connect us with you and to bring peace between you and us, according to the book of Romans chapter 12, my father. Mm. We say thank you for everything. We give you all the glory and the honor. Lord, protect each of everyone here, Almighty Father. Give them the opportunity of mm. the gospel, Lord. We are here for the sake of souls, Mighty Father. Mm. We are here for the sake of your kingdom, Jehovah God. Help mm. each of us to expand heavenly kingdom, Mighty Father. Mm. Let the sword of heaven and the sword from heaven to protect us from every, every, every work of the enemy God. We say thank you. We bless your name. We give the glory and the honor. Thank you for every soul, God. Thank you so much. We have nothing to give you, God, but all is just thanksgiving, Father. Because you are the owner of everything, God. You are the creator of everything here on earth. There is none like you. We bless your name. We will we lift you up. As we worship you, as we have you before you, you are the God, the Father, Almighty. I pray for everybody as I believe in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, I just want to thank Amen. everyone for coming on. Those who stayed with us for two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, Wycliffe, I want to thank you for coming from all the way over from Kenya to go ahead and talk to us, man. I definitely yeah. thank God for you. Beautiful. Really feel the, the spirit Amen. among you, Lord, for, for your reality. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you that iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another. Jesus' name. Thank you for Des, God. For Des has kept the kept the kept the sword sharpened, and uh, the call of the knights of uh, the round table of God together, and bless him for this this unique unique uh, forum he's got, and that it would expand and grow for your glory. Hallelujah, God, because there's just too many voices out there that have nothing to do with you. And thank you for the few that have everything to do with you, that you would use it to the ends of the earth, even as we were at the ends of the earth with our brother Wycliffe at night. And uh, my brother on the other side of the United States tonight, my other brother. God, you are good. You are omnipotent. You're omnipresent. You always have been and you always will be and thank you for giving us this existence and sharing sharing in this life and partaking of your eternal gift of eternal life in jesus name amen, amen. amen. all right well we're about thank to you wendell Wait all right Hold on. Joseph. all right walter desmond yes hey wickliffe i Hold on. Is Amen. He, is he okay? Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I think. I, oh, there we go. <laughs> no, I heard the I heard the wind in the background. So I just muted you for a moment. And but, the bird. Uh, I heard the birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm about I'm about to go ahead and close this on out. I want to thank everyone for coming on. Those who've been in the comment section, uh, MSICU one two one two two one. I see you one the last one standing. <laughs> Uh, again, I, like I said, I don't normally do this, but for open dialogue, I think it's important for us to go ahead and do this, share a testimony. 
you know, just let, let people know who we are and how God is using us. I just thank God for all of us. Thank God for everyone in the comment section, those who may be watching later. And one so last you're thing. You're going to be on again on 8, 8.30 Saturday. I'll, I'll try I'll try to see if I'm uh, out in Belleville, but I'll, I'll try to get back in time. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 8.30. Uh, I, I keep it at 8.30. It might change eventually, but for right now, 8.30 Central Standard Time, 9.30 Eastern. Okay. On Saturday. Lord bless you guys. Lord Keep bless you. Always. All right. Thank you. I I'll always enjoy this. This is my fellowship, guys. I don't have much fellowship over here. I have my sister, my mother. I love that. Great, wow. you know. My, uh, what is it? My new fiance. Um, the, um, uh, yeah, and, and you brothers, you know what I mean? And, uh, and uh, brothers on another channel. So that's it. So are, those, are, those, are those two redwood trees behind you? No, no. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Before we start a new conversation, we're going to close this out. Okay, you have a good night. <laughs> Lord bless you. Well, good night, guys. Hey, guys. Are those two uh, towering angels behind you? <laughs> <laughs> he All wants right. to keep you on. <laughs> All right. Man, I love you Thank guys. You. Man. Good night, Joseph. Good night, Apple Park today. Like Wycliffe, take care, buddy. Guys, good, good night, night everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, Desmond here, and I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch these videos. If you could, please like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share these videos if you believe that they are helpful to those who are coming into the knowledge of Christ. This will also help me very much in this channel, and if you have any ideas for a topic, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for watching, engaging, and keep the knights in your prayers. Love you all, and have a good evening.